I'm like trying to read it and then I'm like is that myself on the screen oh shit we go ahead and play the music <laughs> I hope y'all are doing good today happy Friday I've been dropping a lot of content this week I'm super proud of myself I've been staying busy okay I've been I told you I was gonna come back with a damn vengeance so thank y'all for the support um the channel is definitely growing I'm really happy um, so we should be to man subscribers soon. I'm super, super excited. I just been like, oh my gosh, I'm not being suppressed like I once was. So everything is going good. Um, I know there was somebody like whining and crying, Chad, like, you need to do videos about the wars that are coming and this and that. Once again, this is called YouTube. If you are passionate about what is going on in Israel and on the Gaza Strip, create your own shit. You don't get to tell me what I'm going to create on my channel. Like, if you want that type of content, create it. Because I have that type of content. You got to pay for it. I'm not getting on YouTube and talking about anything super serious or that can jeopardize my channel. That's why I've been shadow banned for years. I'm no longer doing that, okay? I'm playing the game. Anything serious that I need to talk about will be on another platform. So, again, if that's what you're looking for, you need to create it yourself. Or go watch people who hit on those topics. But here we about to have fun. We gonna sip tea. We gonna have a good old funky time. So before we get started, I know my Discord is like going off. Hold on, this thing is always beeping. Um, before we get started, I wanted to thank this young lady. She came to my New Year's Eve event, and I got this in the mail, Shanta. So thank you so much. It's beautiful. It's like a, it's a candle, but it looks like it's like a whole bunch of frosting and it smells so good. There's glitter on here. Y'all know I love my candles. So I appreciate it and I really appreciate the card. She sent me just a sweet message. She had a wonderful time at my New Year's Eve event. So shout out to all the tea sippers who came to Minneapolis and celebrated the New Year with me. Um, we had an awesome time. So I can't wait till we can build some more awesome memories in 2024. So thank you so much, Shanta, for that gift. So now, um, shout out to Dollface. I know a lot of people were shocked to see him call into the call-in show. Um, Dollface is still around. He's out here doing his thing. He's still doing his closet talks. Um, he doesn't uh, do videos as much as he used to, but he's back getting into it. Um, he's mainly on Twitter, though. He's always on Twitter, you know, going back and forth, you know, with, with the other gang. So it was just funny to have him call in. It was just really good. So I'm glad you guys have been enjoying the call-in show. We're definitely back to doing them. Um, Ahmed is still working on some stuff with the app. We're trying to figure out why it crashed. We had so many people come in that day. Like I said, when we did the test run, it was like 100 people. But when I announced the call-in show, I mean, some people flooded in there. Plus, people were trying to like set up their usernames. And I just think it was just too much on the system. So if you're having issues um, creating a user profile, contact me. Let me know. Uh, with your information, email address, username, so I can get that over to Ahmed, and then he can um, go in there and get you set up. But for the most part, the app is working great. People are getting their notifications, so I'm just super, super happy. So we'll do another call-in show this upcoming week. Um, I will keep you guys posted on that. But um, yeah, so it's, it's been a lot, child. It's been a lot going on. So right now, I have a lot of follow-ups. I got a lot of follow-up tea that we're going to talk about. Um, so you guys remember the other day I had did the video on the mom at Walmart with the baby that took the baby out there. It was cold around that time in Mississippi. She's dressed, you know, in her little Mexican boots and, you know, a sweatshirt. Meanwhile, her baby's in there in just a pamper. So the mother was arrested. Um, they found out who she was. She was arrested. And like I said, if she can do that in public, imagine what's going on behind the scenes. Once the police um, came to Walmart to arrest her, they found out that the baby that was in the cart with her 
he was four years old, but she had another, she had two more kids at the house. They were by themselves in the house. One was three and the other, the littlest baby is five months old. So she literally had her three-year-old babysitting her five-month-old. So she needed to be arrested. I just, I thought it was bullshit. I hated the fact that, you know, that this baby even had to deal with that. So we're gonna watch this video really quick. Let me see if I can find it of her being arrested here. Oh, I have so many things up. Give me just a second. Do, 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 do. I have a lot of pages up, shit. Okay, here we go. Let me share this tab with y'all and then we're gonna watch her video. Cause you know, of course, now she's demanding a whole fund me. She wants, you know, money now. So this is the story here. Um, police were called. She's facing neglect charges. Her name is Cambria Darby. She entered a Mississippi Walmart with her barely dressed toddler. The toddler was only seen in his diaper and had no garments on. Um, the shopper and now former employee Felicia Darlin showed concerns and they basically, you know, got her arrested. According to WJTTV, police arrived at the store about 10.30 a.m. and arrested the mother and she's facing neglect charges. So now she's trying to talk about the situation. So we're going to go ahead and watch the video. So give me just a second to pull up her video where she's talking about She's trying to basically speak on her side of the story. She's saying that, you know, her babies are good. She feeds them. They have all types of toys. But most importantly, we can't forget, she's demanding a whole fund me. She does not like the fact that the Walmart employee is getting $29,000 from GoFundMe. And she feels like that money should come to her and her children. Child. It's the entitlement for me. Okay, let me go ahead and get this up here. All right, here she goes. We're gonna go ahead and watch watch this here. You wasn't helping with a thing. You didn't help with a thing. You actually made stuff worse. First of all, you have a child that's dead. Rest in peace to your baby. I, I pray that God can have you with more kids, which I'm, I'm sure he will. He'll definitely bless you with more children. Um, But... So as a mother, you should know what it feels like to have some have your kids. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, this is what we're not gonna do. Come on, black people. I'm not even trying to be funny, but we have to stop with the smoke detector beeping in the background. I too have been guilty of this, not judging. But at some point in time, we gotta keep C batteries on deck. My smoke detector was going off the other day. I ran upstairs, couldn't reach it, so I called my son. As soon as you get home, you gotta change this. And of course, you know, because he's, you know, black folks, he put the battery in backwards. <laughs> so we have to redo it. But come on, please, y'all, change the battery on your smoke detectors. This is starting to be an internet meme. Do better. I'm taking away from you. So right now, um, I lost 10 pounds currently because my kids are gone for me. I haven't seen my kids. Um, I, I see them now under super restrict, restrict, certain restrictions, but like my son, he doesn't understand why, like he need therapy now. He can't understand why I'm gone, like in the public, it's too much going on in the public right now. We can't, I can't even take him to Chuck E. Cheese under supervision if I wanted to anywhere because people, I'm getting like har harassments and things like that. So... Um, well, you know, well, ma'am, if you're being harassed, how about you just twerk? Just get up and shake your ass. Well, isn't that what you was doing at Walmart? Oh, couldn't stop shaking your ass when they were confronting you. So keep the same energy. When they confront you, just twerk. Okay, just twerk something. What's the problem? Situation, I, I really feel bad for my Child, baby. Where's my violin? I in my ear when I'm thinking about a lot of stuff. And he, every time I see him, he's like, doing the same, you know, he is mama's child, he does the same thing, and I'm like, baby, like, it's gonna be all right, you know, and stuff like that, like, I just really can't explain to him, for, for real, for real, he's only four years old, so, that's with that, um, I know a lot of y'all want to know, that baby must be living in horrible living conditions, horrible, if he's treated like that here, I wonder how he's treated at home, 
this is a period a period time a decimal of what that's that's not that's nothing that's like baby stuff that's like ma'am them having power wheels pow pow power wheels that doesn't mean anything you can buy your kids all types of toys gadgets you know fun things but are you actually spending time with your children that is the question because the power wheel can't keep him warm as a mother he should have had on a full outfit coat shoes and everything else how are you spending more on a power wheel than what he's dressed like when he comes out the house nothing i'm talking private vip to see disney vip to see blippy they met this man they met um who else they meet they, they do well we do a lot of, i do a lot of different activities with my kids and do water parks i do arts and crafts with my kids i don't give my kids melatonin okay that's cute she does she does arts and crafts they done met Blippi or Blinky, whatever the hell his name is. They done been to Disney World. She doesn't get a melatonin. But yet and still, you didn't give him a coat. This is why we're here. You're telling us all the stuff that you do to him, but the most basic things that you should have done is not allow your son to come out the house in the middle of winter with no coat, no shoes, and only a pamper on. We don't care that he's been to Disney World and that he's hung with Blippi because from what I hear anyways, Blippi, you know, he be on some weird ass shit with them babies. Whatever the hell his damn name is. So, yeah, I don't care about none of that. You know, I'm not saying I'm against the people that do, but I don't do that. You know, I do everything. I read my kids' books. Um, let them run around. I let my kids do a lot. I do a lot. Of Every holiday I decorate for them. <laughs> I hate the um, smoke detector. It's like, as y'all can see, it's decorated in here now. Which it was decorated before they, they even left. So, like, yeah. Um... My kids believe in Cupid, everything else, like I stated before in my Facebook post, which I, I'm going to put my page back up, but I just kind of got off there. Wait, point. did she say her kids believe in Cupid? Ma'am, Cupid is not real. Impress me by letting me know that your kids believe in God or some form of, you know, you know, higher power. I, I don't care if they believe in Cupid. Like, my kids believe in Cupid! Who gives a fuck? <laughs> what? They're four and three, who cares? I'm not impressed. Um, so it's nothing how y'all try to say horrible living conditions. Never that. Never, never, ever, 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 never that. So, um, that's that about that. My biggest thing right now though, um is the false allegations that's out there about me. Not a bad mama, never been a bad mama. It's I, my main thing really honestly is just I, I miss my kids. Like I said, I don't miss lost 10 pounds already um i can't really eat like i like like i'm chewing gum now i do stuff like that can't eat but chewing gum like a mofo okay the damn smoke detector in the background is getting on my nerves she says she's lost 10 pounds i can believe that you know this has to be a stressful situation for her you know she has three children so i can believe that but the question is where's the father is anybody else ask am i wrong to ask this she has a five month old baby a three-year-old and a four-year-old. These kids are literally back to back to back. Where are the daddy at? And her kids look biracial. So, where he at, sis? I'm just saying. Where the daddy? Because she didn't have these three kids by herself. My baby, he misses, he misses me. And my biggest thing right now, I'm going to make a go for me for gas because I'm under it. Um, I don't really want to talk about the case too much, but um, I can't see my kids under like strict restrictions. I want to do raise money for gas for that. Okay, so okay, money. okay. Let me stop you there, sis. First and foremost, so now she wants a whole fund me. Okay, she wants the internet to you know whole fund her. And my thing is this: we have nothing to do with this situation. If you need gas <laughs> to go see your children and for them to do indoor activities. How about you ask the man who knocked you up with these three children? Where is he at? Where's Big Mama now? Why is it the internet's job to get you gas money to go see your kids when you put yourself in this predicament? Child. For indoor activities, because right now we're not even in a safe space to even go to places. We can't even go nowhere publicly. Like, you really ruined a lot of stuff, ma'am. Like, for real, but... If it was actually done from the goodness of your heart, you know, the Bible says that 
you want to do stuff, you know, those who, when you do good deeds, you give to the needy, blah, blah, I'm not needy, better way, but to give to the needy. Okay, here we go with the Bible quotes. You know, they, you can't, you can't be in the South and not quote something from the Bible. So she said that the lady at Walmart messed up a lot of things. Ma'am, where is the personal responsibility? Not once did I hear her apologize. Not once did I hear her say, you know what, I was wrong. You know, I need to do better. Yes, I shouldn't have had my baby out there freezing cold. I shouldn't have threw a, a big ass bag of frozen vegetables on his thighs while he's sitting there cold. Um, don't quote Bible quotes to me. This is giving Krishan. You know, Krishan loves to cry and quote God. And then the same breath, she's beating bitches up. You know what I'm saying? And acting a fool on social media. Let's leave God out of our fuckery, okay? You don't do it. You know, like, hey, look at me. Look at me. Like how the um, hypocrites would do. You actually, you know, you do it in private, you know, to your father that is because you're doing it for public. It's for people that can see. You need to do it to your father that is unseen. Don't believe I saw your GoFundMe. You have received your reward in full, as the Bible states. But I'm telling you, ma'am, God could have tripled that for you. If something was done in, in, in private, but like I said, my kids are not. Okay, how was this supposed to be done in private? You bought your innocent child, okay, to a public Walmart in a pamper in the middle of, you know, the winter. And it was really, really cold that week. So you did this in public, but somehow she's supposed to pull you to the side in private. No, I believe at this point in public shaming. I think this is the only way you can get people to change you know, their behavior. Like I said, that's probably that's part of the problem around with society nowadays is that people have no shame. There's no more shame. So now that she's been shamed, now she's saying, oh, she should have pulled to the side in public. I mean, in private, absolutely not. You had no problem popping off on people in public. You started twerking and acting a fool in public. But not everybody's supposed to pull you to the side quietly. No, ma'am. Whatever y'all trying to portray, there is... Nothing like that. And another thing I had wanted to mention, um, something else like bearing false, like I really believe this is a learning lesson for you. False witness, thou should not um, come and give false testimonies against your neighbor. That's what you're doing because situations like this. Now, my kids have to heal from this. I have to heal from this. I've been going through stuff. I don't know if you got my kids back yet. Um, but Why is she acting like she's Jesus Christ on the cross? Thou should not bear false witness, ma'am. I wasn't there at Walmart, and I could see the bullshit that was going on. What false witness? The baby was not AI generated in a pamper. You bought your child out of the house. You were argumentative. You were rude. Even when that lady, the, the auntie that was putting the, the outfit on that baby, you said that you were more concerned with your phone call then making sure your baby was okay. So, like, what? Why is she acting like this is this huge conspiracy? You know, like the, the Bible says, we can rejoice when we run into trouble because it builds endurance. Endurance builds character, and character builds strength, hope, salvation. Um, everything happens for a reason. I, you tarnished my name. I'm a child's author. I'm. Um, you can look me up on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. Um, I got author name is Kimmy Darby. For I got a book about autism that's out as well. Um, I had a, when they're making them under a contract to make another book. Probably gonna have to hold off on it because you, I, I'm a kid's author. If you tarnish my name, um, no personal responsibility at all. Now she's a kid's author. She has books on Amazon. She might be. But let's keep it real. Anybody can write a book and put it on Amazon. Amazon ain't going to say, we don't want your money. Yes, put your book on here and pay us X amount of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Every time your book sells. Like, girl, that means nothing. At the end of the day, nobody knew who you were until you put yourself in this situation. But I got faith in God. Um, like I said, you have received your reward in full. That little 20000 God could have tripled it and made it 200000 Yeah. But okay, this is why she's really mad. We're getting to the nitty gritty. Okay, and I haven't watched this full video, so we're watching it together. This is why she's really mad. Now you hear her talking about you know, that $20,000. God could have tripled it in full. Okay, let's keep let. This is why she's really in her feelings. Let's keep it real. 
everything happens for a reason. This is bringing me closer to God, trials and tribulations. Um, <laughs> Did y'all hear the smoke detector say tink? Low battery. Bitch, go change your smoke detector. Low battery. <laughs> Damn, these 2023. Well, no, we're in 2024 now, honey. They're not playing. They're not just beeping. They're saying, low battery, bitch. Change the smoke detector. Low battery. Everybody that's defending me, thank you. Everybody's praying for me, thank you. I did want to say it. Let's not go back and forth for anymore. You know, if you got to say something, say it. We're going to find a positive in every negative. You know? This makes me appreciate my kids ten times more. You know? Um, ten, ten times. Definitely ten times more. Um, definitely find the, the positive in every negative situation. I ask that y'all don't go back and forth for anybody. We're not doing that. We're not going back and forth for people. Online. Midget bitches is mine, says the Lord. His wrath cannot compare. You know? So, and nobody needs to question God neither. Like, why is he giving this girl money? The girl that posted the video money. You don't need to question him either because he. We can't tell him how to move his hand. It says that. I'm not going to swear. We can't tell him how to move his hand. Okay, Miss Low Battery. Okay. The reason why she's getting money is because stupid ass Walmart fired her. Okay. They fired her for posting a video of you. The internet sympathized with her because she was only trying to get the message out. Because like I said, I'm here for public shaming. Because what was done to that child was just, it was uncalled for. It was embarrassing. You had no remorse in the store. She decided to post the video. She was fired. She's getting money. She's getting her blessings because people feel like it was unfair for her to be fired. So many people donated to her GoFundMe. That is why she's getting money. It has nothing to do with why is God blessing her and why is his hand on her forehead and not on mine. Why are you over here doing all this preaching? He's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to do what he's going to do for me too. And I know it's an outcome. I will push through this like the lady was pushing through the crowd to just to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And her faith, because of her faith, when she wanted, it was done. So I'm going to push through. <laughs> I'm going to push through this. I'm going to still smile, still get up, make my bed every day. I can't eat. You know, I can eat a little bit, probably like a little much, much here, but it's about just meals and stuff. I can't do that. Losing weight, I asked God, you know, God, I need help losing this baby weight. I just had a baby like five months ago. God works in mysterious ways. He's helping me with that, so. <laughs> Girl, that is not, that was not God. You had a baby five months ago and you had your three-year-old babysitting your five-month-old while you was at Walmart twerking and cussing out strangers. That's not God. That's that's not God's way. God didn't want you to lose 10 pounds of baby weight because you were visited by social services. I think he'd much rather have you with your children and being a good mom and a good stewarder, stewardess and, you know, just taking care of your kids and doing what you needed to do than having CPS involved so that way you can lose 10 pounds. That just, it doesn't even make any sense. It does not make any sense. It works out for your good. Um, but this, my name is just been tarnished, and I'm, I'm very sad about that. I'm not a bad mother at all. Just continue to pray for me, you know, like oh, I said, for my kids, because we, all our activities have to be restricted to in the house, because what's going on now, people recognize me everywhere I go. I have to use fake names to order stuff and things like that, so. Okay, people recognize you everywhere you go, yet and still, you're coming to social media and doing a nine-minute rant so people can recognize you even more. Make it make sense. You're so scared of people, you know, recognizing you and knowing who you are and you need the money so that way you can do indoor activities with your kids. If you're that scared, you would not be on social media going live and giving this whole explanation and wanting a whole fund me set up. So she's scared of the public, but she's not scared of the public's money. But, um, how I be with me, my kids, Everybody else, and I look a mess. I don't care because y'all done, done saw me looking a mess. 
Y'all don't already saw me. The world don't see me looking at me. So I don't care about me coming on here in my pajamas. Y'all saw me in my bunnies. I don't care about me no lashes on. Y'all saw how I was looking in here. So um, it is what it is. Um, everything going to work out for my good. In Jesus' name. All right, bye. In Jesus' name, we'll see you later, ma'am. All right, let me go back to my damn full screen. All right, all right. Okay, th this is a hot mess. Now, I'm going to say this. Like, all jokes aside, um, I hope that she does better herself in this situation. I do not feel bad that she was blasted by the Walmart employee and other people who were there helping her. I think, you know, maybe she was going through it. You know, a lot of people saying, you know, postpartum and things like that. But I also get tired of that being an excuse for everything, postpartum, mental illness. We've all been through stuff, okay? We've all been through stuff. That's no excuse. It's no excuse. You chose to have these children. Where this, the father is, I have no idea. Because, again, she has very young children. The youngest being five months old. Why was the father not there watching the kids or the father's side of the family? Like I said, initially, she's not having these kids by herself. So to me, both parents have dropped the ball with these children. And if you cannot handle, if it's too much for you to handle the first two, why is there a five-month-old involved? It just doesn't make sense. Obviously, she's overwhelmed. She has a lot going on. So why keep having children when it's hard enough for you to deal with the first two? I hope for her sake that she just follows the court's orders, that she gets into parenting classes, that she gets the help that she needs, and that she does the right thing before they give her children back to her. Right now, her kids are living with a relative that, I guess, social services, they have vetted, and they said the relative, you know, was a safe option for the children. So do I feel like she should never get her kids back? No, because I feel like, at the end of the day, people can make mistakes, and we have to give people room to grow and do better, okay? So I hope instead of her shifting the blame and asking for GoFundMe money and, you know, feeling jealous because a Walmart employee is eating off of her situation, I hope she uses this time to better herself, get parenting classes, and do what she needs to do for her children because it's not about the material shit that you buy for your kids. That's cute that they got power wheels and cars and, you know, all types of fun stuff to play with, but it's not about that. It's also about the basic necessities. Are these kids being fed three times a day? Are their pampers being changed? Are their clothing being changed? Are they potty trained? Are they leaving out the house in warm clothing? You know, for her to be a children's author and be oblivious to having her child outside in the cold in a pamper just makes no sense. And you could just tell by that little boy, he was going through so much. Just, you know, looking at his eyes, he was going through so much. And like I said, if she can come out in public like that, imagine what's going on at home behind the scenes. So I hope she gets the help that she needs. But I will not be donating to her GoFundMe because it's not the public's job to help her financially. The man who knocked you up three times should be there to pay and give you gas and pay for indoor activities and all that other stuff. It's not, the, it's not social media's job. The reason why social media helped the Walmart lady is because she lost her job. And a lot of people, including myself, felt like Walmart was wrong for taking her job from her. So the whole situation is a mess. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tiff sent $5, says this is my first time sending a super chat. Love you, T. You always keep us entertained. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, Bree sent 1999 says, Hey T, glad to see you again. I hope you're doing well. Please inform me on this T as well. And could I be a mod? Yes, give me just a second here. Oh, hold on. I don't know if it's gonna okay, it did. Okay, you're a mod. Thank you, Bree. Uh Alexandra. Oh, hold on, it just refreshed. Alexandra said 999 says, hey T, it's sinful creations. My mom just overcame being on life support for two weeks and all of your videos got me in great spirits and took my mind off of things. I had myself a laughing daily. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. Um, I hope she's doing so much better. I hope 2024 goes really good for you this year. As you know, I love your work. 
Um, you're my favorite nail tech on Instagram. So keep up the good work and um, I'm really happy that your mom is doing okay and that my videos were able to help you. So thanks for checking in, sis. Let's see here. Spooky Sully sent ten. Well, sent ten thousand dollars in Wan money. I'm assuming they're in China. Said, what a way to start my Saturday morning. Oh my gosh, it's Saturday morning in China. Meanwhile, it is seven fifty three here in well in the Midwest. So thank you so much. I'm glad you're starting your Saturday morning with me. Uh, let's see here. Shell sent a ten dollar sticker. Thank you, Shell. I appreciate you. Shell in the UK. Uh, Miss Pink and Black sent ten dollars. Says, "Hey T, it's up. Jumped the boogie from Discord. I love you, boo. Made major life decisions today. Feeling amazing. Thanks for the live to make my Friday even better. That is awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that whatever decision you made, you're happy with. So you're gonna have to spill the tea um, on our next Zoom in meeting and let me know what happened. So thank you for checking in, sis. Um." Alicia says, T, that red hair and lipstick looks beautiful on you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Michelle sent $20. Says, I know you hear this all the time, but you look beautiful. I appreciate the topics that you hit on and how genuinely you communicate them. Keep up the great work and hit the like button. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate the love and support. Thanks for coming through. And yes, y'all, hit the like button. Um, it looks like we have... Who we got here? We got over 6,000 people in here. So please hit the like button if you guys are enjoying this stream. Thank y'all for checking in. Oh, Beast Lee's in the house. What's up, Beast? Uh, he says, listening to my home girl while cooking fried chicken. Oh, fried chicken fried rice and egg rolls from scratch. Love you, sis. Okay, Beast. Beast over there throwing down in the kitchen. Thank you for coming through. He's been an OG tea sipper for literally from like day one. So it's always good to hear from our OGs. So thank you. Hope you have a good dinner. Um, Kyra sent four ninety nine says off topic, but I find it funny that the barbs constantly attack you to defend Nikki on your calling show. Love you, T. You look stunning. Thank you, girl. We're not worried about any of these fandoms, child. I get attacked by all of them. I've been attacked by the barbs. I get attacked by the the hotties. Uh, hell, even Barney Gang was dragging me because, you know, they thought that we had posted that post on purpose. And my blogger posted it, and like I said, she didn't know. You know, she thought it was Barty Gang, you know, teaming up with the hotties to have Megan's back. You know, she didn't know. She's a grown woman, and she's not into all this weird fandom stuff. So, you know, it was an honest mistake, you know, and I got drugged for it, and that's okay. You know, it's my brand. I get that. But I don't, I don't care about these grown adults and these children who sit there and fan off of people who don't personally know you. You know, even when I was getting dragged by Barty Gang, I'm like, y'all are cussing me out and, you know, dragging me. Meanwhile, I talked to Cardi and she's like, shit happens. Like, what, what are y'all crying for? Like, it's like y'all be so invested in a lot of these celebrities don't know y'all and really don't care. And, you know, the whole doxing thing that a lot of these barbs are being accused of doing, I think like they're going to start getting in trouble. Like, I'm seeing a lot of stuff on social media where people are talking about pressing charges and stuff like that. Now, I get having your face back, right? I get it. And it's not just the black stands, right? You also have the Swifties. You know, they act crazy. The Ariana Grande, Grande, whatever the hell they call themselves, Arenators, you know, the Believers. They done attacked me before back in the day. Um, so all of these fandoms just act a, a fool. And it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? Defend your faves, support their music. But all this trolling and doxing people, I just think it's just tacky. You know, it just really is. So for me, I don't want to be involved in anybody's fandom wars. I like those who like me. There are barbs who rock with me heavy, you know, that I have no issues with. There are Barty gang members who have my back and who rock with me heavy. And shout out to the ones who are just respectful and were like, T, um, I don't think you posted this on purpose. I don't know if you know this is up. So I had a lot of really cool ones who reached out to me. But like I said, I didn't know it was up on Twitter because I had taken it down off of Instagram. But I totally forgot it was on Twitter until like one of my Facebook friends, and he's an older gentleman. Like, he ended up messaging me like, T, you're like being attacked all over Twitter. Like, what's going on? And I was like, huh? And then when I went on there, I realized the post had been up for like three hours. And I had no idea. So, but shout out to the people who were respectful, who knew that obviously it was a fluke. You know, but to the ones who like had an aneurysm behind it, I don't give a fuck. Move along. Like I said, this too shall pass. So, yeah, a lot of these fandoms, they're just over the top. 
<laughs> Somebody said the urinators. <laughs> Ariana Grande's urinators, y'all are a mess. Yeah, a lot of these fandoms are over the top. I just, I, I just don't care enough. You know what I'm saying? And like I told y'all, you would really think that it was like little kids. Th these fandoms be grown women and grown men. A lot of them be grown adults. I would never forget the one Barty Gang member that I was cool with. We used to talk all the time in the DMs. And she was like, you know, my husband is threatening to leave me. I said, husband? Because she was just all day, she was just defending Cardi. And I get it. She's a Cardi B fan. She had a whole fan page on Instagram. She went hard for Cardi. And then we had a heart to heart one. And she's like, her husband was threatening to leave her. I said, husband? So you got a husband? She was like, yeah. I said, he's threatening to leave you. She was like, because he's saying that I'm too obsessed with this whole Cardi stand page and just helping her. And, you know, I just feel like she's a daughter to me. I said, a daughter to you? I said, well, ma'am, how old are you? This woman was my mom's age. She was like in her late 50s. I said, ma'am, if you don't delete the damn stand page and go suck your husband. <laughs> I didn't say all that. But I'm like, come on, chat. You about to lose your marriage of like 20-something years behind running a Cardi B fan page. You don't go get that man some head. <laughs> she was like, they're not even intimate no more because she was just so running this fan page and he was getting upset. Girl, if you don't go get that man some. <laughs> Bitch, I had to pull my tiny violin on her ass. Like, I can't relate to this foolishness. You too old for this shit. Go get that man some puss, some good head, and delete the damn fan page. <laughs> I thought she took my advice because the fan page is no longer at <laughs> This was like four years ago. The fan page is no longer active. But, you know, shout out to you, sis. But I was just like, really? You're debating? Your husband is crying out for cooch and attention. He misses you. So when I tell you, some of these, y'all be thinking these fan pages be little kids in high school? Shit. Some of them be grown-ass men and women. Grandparents. You so busy worrying about what's going on with Nikki and Cardi and Megan. Meanwhile, your, your, your damn man is over there with his work wife. Or your woman is over there with her work husband. I'm just saying. Get out these celebrities' peens and tits and go tend to your go tend to your man or wife or husband or girlfriend. Shit. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how to bite my tongue. That was my advice. Like, girl, if you don't go get that man some cooch and some head and fucking delete this damn fan page, you too old for this shit. Oh, no, see my damn mama tell me, I don't know what I should do. My husband is pressuring me, saying that Cardi B's coming in between our relationship. She technically is. Like, what? <laughs> Let me get on to the next subject. <laughs> Kyra, you done switched the damn topic around. I never forget that and that's when I realized like oh wow these are really grown folks who are running a lot of these fan pages so child no it is not that serious uh let me see here Summer Williams said 1999 she says hey lovely T I want to let you know in case you haven't heard Vince McMahon just paid his first victim her name is Rita Chatterton and she's the first victim of his in 1986 after he said he was innocent 30 years later mmm I'm definitely following up on some more Vince McMahon team. Me and my son were talking about this, my oldest, the other day. You know, because we used to all watch wrestling together when they were younger, when I was still into, like, WWE and stuff like that. And um, he was saying, like, Mom, sometimes I go back and I watch the old wrestling stuff, and I'm like, who approved these skits? I was like, I don't know. Like, even when you go back and you watch some of these skits, I remember Stephanie McMahon was talking about a skit that they actually scrapped. Where Vince McMahon, when she was pregnant, he wanted to do a storyline that he was the father. And she was like, no, dad, that's incest. So he was like, well, if you don't feel comfortable with that, let's say that it was Shane. Let's say Shane knocked you up. She was like, no, I'm not going to do a storyline about my brother knocking me up. Like, like, who thinks of this? Like, Vince McMahon is creepy. 
And my son was even talking about, like, remember when he's walking around with a do-rag and acting like he was black? I was like, yeah, I don't know what that was about. I really don't. And he had the black scent. I mean, he did this for, like, almost six months. Child. I don't know if I want to do a Vincent Man deep dive. I know people have been asking me. I don't know. Because that's 30 years of history. This damn Didi deep dive is getting on my nerves. It's so damn long. So, we'll see. We'll see. But he definitely has issues. But, yeah, he tried to do an incest thing. Y'all remember that, wrestling fans? And she came out she was like, I'm not doing an incest storyline with my dad. Like, absolutely not. He has issues. He has issues. And I did hear that he was abused. Um, they said that he was, you know what I'm saying, he went through when he was younger, possibly like some homosexual abuse as well. You know, but either way, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Let's see here. Unknown man sent $2, says, toys do not equal clothes, period. Love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you so much. Uh, Jillian sent 20, says, hey, T, congratulations on all the great things happening. I love your app, sending love. Thank you so much, Jillian. Girl, I cannot wait till we do this party. Jillian came to my last party in Atlanta. She was like, I'm just a mom in the Midwest. She was like, I just wanted to get out the house. I live in Ohio. And she came and we turned up with Jillian, honey. We had Jillian twerking in the damn club. So I cannot wait till this year's party. We're going to have such a good time. I can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much for the support as always. And I'm loving the app. I really am. I'm so happy that everybody's getting their notifications on time. So if you guys have not downloaded the app, it's the lovely TTV app. It's on Apple and it's on the Google Play Store. So make sure you guys download it, register. We already have like... 8,000 users on the app so we have a lot of people you guys will get notifications anytime I go live drop a podcast a YouTube video the notifications on the app are even better than what YouTube sends out so make sure you guys download the app so thank you so much Jillian uh let's see here uh Monija Harris I hope I pronounced that right that's pretty Mon Monija I think it's Monija all I heard was me 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 not once did she take accountability for her actions and say how she would do better. Exactly. That's what bothered me. She didn't take any type of accountability. It was everybody else's fault but hers. Um, Trisha sent 499 says, lying eyes and that gap smacking that gum. Love you, auntie. Yeah, I think the gum smacking along with the smoke detector in the back, like, change the battery, bitch. That got on my nerves. But, you know, she can't help her eyes, child. She can't help her gap. She's a pretty lady. She just needs to get it together. She needs to get it together. So I hope she does that for her children's sake. Because they do need their mom. But they need their mom who is healthy and in the best mental state. They don't need a mom who's going to allow them to go out there and, and be out there in the cold and the pamper. They don't need a mom who's going to force a three-year-old to babysit a five-month-old. So she needs to get in her, she needs to get help. She needs to get help. So I hope she gets the help that she needs. Um, let's see here. Trisha says in the old testament, in the old testament, she would have been stoned to death. Oh no. <laughs> um, Paladine Sin 5 says she's a straight up villain, got her baby out here in the cold, smacking gum in my ear. Fire alarm <laughs> Fire alarm chirping and misquote in the Bible. <laughs> she called her a villain. Oh my gosh, y'all are wildin'. Y'all are wildin'. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. All right, so oh, hold on here. Hold on. Okay, Angel Vargas said 999 says beep low battery. <laughs> Melanin Queen, what's up, sis? Says it's the smacking gum for me, the shooting one eyeball to one corner of the room. Who asks for money for GoFundMe for gas? She can drop it low and bust it wide. She can go get a job. God bless you, T. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I mean, as good as her twerking was, girl, you better go get up on somebody's stage, honey. You know, it's funny that people always, like I said, there's no shame. She didn't think it was going to go viral. She thought these people confronting her were losers. So like I said, keep the same energy. When people confront you and clown you in the street, just bend over and twerk. So what you did at Walmart, keep the same energy. Just every time somebody's like, are you that crazy lunatic from the Walmart video? Don't even answer them. Just bend over and twerk. I'm saying, I'm just, I'm just saying. So thank you, sis. 
<laughs> uh, Vila Media sent ten dollars. Says, "Hey T, watching you all the way from Canada. Love your channel. What do you think about T B Joshua's documentary? I don't know who T B Joshua is." Let me Google real quick. I don't know who that is. TB Joshua. Tell me to hold on. He's a Nigerian charismatic pastor. He's a Nigerian pastor. I've never watched him. Expose YouTube deletes Emmanuel TV's channel of disgrace. Oh, he's been disgraced. Shit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm gonna have to do some research, sis. I don't know who that man is. I'm going to have to do some research. I'm not into a lot of, like, online pastors, even the American ones, Joe Osteen, and all. I'm not into none of these online prosperity pimping pastors, so I definitely don't know the Nigerian ones. Um, they said he's a magician pastor who does exorcisms. He's an African prophet who's accused of assaulting women in his congregation. Is he the one who was um, trying to get demons out of people's vaginas? He went viral. Like he's trying to pull deep, like you got a vagina, you have a demon in your vagina. Is that the man? He was like exercising demons out of vaginas. <laughs> I hate the internet. That is him. Oh, snaps. Oh, I didn't know that was him. Oh yeah. He was doing all types of freaky shit, trying to get demons out of people's vaginas and what was he like? It was just he just he would go viral for like different stuff. Oh my god, I didn't know that was his name. Yeah, I'ma look into you don't spill some tea, sis. And now I'm now I'm curious. Cause he was out there doing all type fingering people, trying to pull the demons out. I'm like, ooh. That's an interesting church. <laughs> he's not only doing prosperity pimping, he's also literally pimping. Mmm. Y'all may have to look into that. Thank you for that. Uh, somebody said, Rock Nation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Susie, for the $199. Um, I, now, okay, I did see that, you know, Meg the Stallion got some type of super deal, child. She took a picture. She was with um, Desiree Perez. Let me see if I can find it. If I can find Meg the Stallion's new deal. She posted it. She has distribution with Warner Brothers now. Because I'm very curious as to how she got such a sweet deal. Okay, here, here goes the article. We're going to look at this real quick. I'm just curious. That's all. That's it. That's all. Go ahead and look at this article. So Meg Thee Stallion Inc.'s deal with Warner Music Group while remaining independent. I'm trying to see. Okay, this don't have her post. I was hoping this had her post. But basically, Meg Thee Stallion continues to be an independent artist while nabbing help from a global music company. Um, Billboard reported. But anyway, she had posted a picture um, with Desiree Perez. I'm trying to see if I can find that. It was on her um, Instagram page. Let me see if I can pull up her Instagram. Because a lot of people were talking about this. I was here for the shade, though. I was definitely here for the shade. All right, let's go to her Instagram page. Okay, here it is. She said, thank you, God, hotties. Um, today, history was made. Today, I signed a distribution deal with my new family at Warner Music, where I maintain my independence as an artist and my own and own my own masters in publishing. This is the first deal of its kind. I hope artists still on the come up or even artists who already established never get discouraged by all the obstacles that come with this industry. Even with all the odds against me, I fought for myself, the hotties fought for me, and at Rock Nation fought for me. And I'm forever grateful. Let's keep running up the numbers. So this is her picture. And as we see, we see Desiree Perez. 
and they're all toasting, toasting to the good life. Now, what I find very interesting about that, that's a sweet deal. And I'm trying to figure out how she got such a sweet deal. She owns her master's publishing and they're doing the distribution. It's never been done before. So Desiree Perez really looked out for her. I think one of the things is like she's like one of the top artists right now for Rock Nation. So they're putting a lot behind her. So I'm trying to see. Yes, I know. That's so true. The last big deal like that was with Master P. Yeah, Master P was one of the only artists who ever had like that sweet deal. So this is really interesting that she was able to get that deal. So I'm wondering how they're going to be able to recoup their money because that's not really, these deals like that don't work out. So I wonder like what else Rock Nation may have worked out in the background for Warner Music Brothers because it's definitely not a deal that they're going to give to every artist. So they're really good. And, and then again, it's not like, She's had all these platinum number one, you know, albums and songs. So they're really taking a chance by doing this. So what I'm thinking is when she does drop her album, that they're expecting really, really big sales. So her fans are going to have to run up those numbers. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to have to really get behind her and run up the numbers. But I think it's dope, though. You know what I'm saying? I think it's dope, but I am very curious as to how she was able to get this deal, because that is not a deal that they're going to give out to hardly any artist. Like like Arnold said, the last deal that an artist got that was that good was Master P. And after that, it was like no nobody else can get a deal like that. So very interesting. Um, Let's see here. And then I got Mary says, I might be late. Are you going to hit on the Jacquees and Trey Songz team? Um, I didn't really plan on it, but we can look at it real quick. It, it's, it comes off to me like a lover's quarrel. Maybe I'm being messy. But it sounds to me like, you know, a lover's quarrel. The way he was hooping and hollering and who the fuck like pulls out somebody's braids? Jacquees' fight. We're going to go ahead and listen to him. Come on, Twitter. Okay, let's see if we can... <laughs> we can pull this up, child. Okay, here you go. I want... I want I, yeah, we're going to watch this together. Give me just a second. Look, look I ain't even going to cap. I want the world to know this bitch-ass nigga Trey Songz is a bitch. Period. Period. This nigga's a bitch, bro. This, this nigga came in the club talking about rape. Fuck, fuck, you fuck you talking about rape for a bitch ass nigga? Then, then you come outside the club and swing on your little brother. You was a bitch. Chris Brown the goat. You was a bitch, brother. About a bitch? That ain't even my bitch. You talking about bitches that's with these niggas? The workers? You talking about people that came with these niggas? Hey man, fuck, fuck you, bitch ass nigga. You a rapist, bitch. And I don't give a fuck if you tell anybody anything about what we text you. Put the message on there, bro. Fuck you, bitch ass nigga. You can never come around me. Fuck you, nigga. Look at this. Look at his dreadlocks. Look, I ain't even gonna. Ah, hold on, let me read. Let me read the caption. Look, I ain't even gonna. Look, I ain't even gonna. Oh, come on, pause. I swear, Twitter X has just been trash. Okay, he says fuck Trey songs. Can't come back to Atlanta. This nigga came to the club and said, I got a Q fit, LOL. Whole time, nigga hating. This man dancing, introducing himself to niggas. All types of shit, bitch ass nigga. I gave that bitch ass nigga a compliment. Man, fuck you, pussy. You a hoe. Boy that love be, boy that love be fake. And this nigga pulled out my dreads. You better be glad them boys wasn't me, boy. You over there with the A. Aaron show. <laughs> I don't even know what he's trying to write. We there from the A to NC to Florida and all that shit. Jacquees. I love you and I've met you several times. You've always been nice, but. Go reattach your dreadlocks and get the fuck off my feed with this bullshit. This sounds like a lover's quarrel. I'm sorry. It sounds like some, you know, I, I don't know. It sounds like 
here and he would like my fit. It just sounds like a lover's quarrel. The, the thing I don't like about this, that's why I have to pull out my tiny violin. I, I don't care because women have been saying for the past five or so years that Trey Songs is a pervert and, the, and, a, and, a, and a artist, right? You know, we can't say that word. People have been calling him out and all of his singing, you know, the, the singing community, the, the singing male community sat there quiet, just like they did with R. Kelly. They all sat there quiet. You never came out and, and you know, had any of the women's backs or said, you know what? I too believe that Trey Song is an R word. But now that you and him are having some type of lover's beef, all of a sudden, rapist, he's a rapist. Rape, 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 rape. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Don't call it out now that you're beefing with him. But when these women were saying this for the past five years, all y'all sat back. So I, I don't respect it. I don't respect it. If you're going to call him out, you should have been called him out. In my tiny violin voice. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I don't respect it. I mean, and then the fact, like, who pulls out somebody's dreadlocks? It, that just seems very sassy to me. Okay? That's how females fight. We pull hair. We pull wigs off. Y'all not seen the baddies? That's all these females do. They pull off wigs. These bitches be looking like men when them wigs come off. <laughs> when them wigs come off with them little ass braids and shit to the back. I'm like, what the fuck is this? That is how women fight. The fact that he's missing how many dreadlocks? One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, he done pulled out five of them. It's very sassy. Trey Songs, that's a sassy fight. You supposed to not... So to me, when I seen the dreadlocks <laughs> up and down my timeline and him screaming out that, you know, Trey Songs is a, you know, the R word, I dismissed it as a lover's quarrel and kept right on scrolling. <laughs> Next! bunch of foolishness on my timeline. I see he doing all this yelling. Now you want to call him the R word? Okay, sir. I can't right on scrolling. Sir, go get them dreadlocks restitched back into your head and leave me alone. It's too late for this shit. <laughs> Trying to enjoy my damn weekend. <laughs> got, got John Queese out of nowhere trending and, and yelling and shit. What the hell is he trending for? <laughs> Why y'all keep saying what Tyrese do? Everybody saying Tyrese. Tyrese did what? Somebody said he think he Latino. Y'all leave Tyrese alone. Y'all know he over there fighting for his life against Home Depot. Home Depot said they not giving him shit. They said you are, you're an actor. You're pretending that there was racism, fool. <laughs> Somebody said, B Y'all are I swear I got so many comedians that be in my chat. Y'all are in the chat. Wallin. Yeah, so I hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, I just, child, I just don't care about this beef with Jacquees and Trey Songs. <laughs> just, I don't care. Trey Songs creeps me out. Um, so let me see. We got to get on to the next topic. Topic. I've been on here for an hour, child. Ooh, time is flying. Oh, we got to talk about this. Oh, we got to talk about this. Okay. Sweetly seasoned. So, whew. Now, y'all remember I did the video on Keith Lee. First of all, let me say this. Some of y'all acting like Keith Lee is God. Oh, you know, Keith Lee, and he's a prophet. Keith Lee is a man who sits in his car and eats food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he gives blessings to people, but stop acting like, stop deifying this man, okay? He just eats food. That's it. That's all. Y'all love to turn everybody into y'all's God. But anyhow, um, y'all seen the Keith Lee video I did? where the lady sweetly seasoned was being put on blast because Keith Lee to told her specifically to that he's going to let them charge his card $4,000. She's to keep 2000 give people free food, and then she's to give $1,000 to the hair braider and the barber. And she chose to keep the money to herself. So people started dragging her. She tried to come out with an explanation. But since then, she has now deleted her page. 
her Instagram page. I'm so glad I downloaded the video because you know I keep receipts. I'm like, this bitch gonna delete this video in the morning. So I made sure to download it and I have her full video in full. Um, it's janky though. Like her connection was really janky. Um, but her Instagram page is gone. So let me share this tab with y'all real quick. So this was her Instagram page. Um, it's gone. So she deleted it. And from what people are telling me, so this is her website here. But what people are telling me is that when you go onto Google, her website, it says that she's closed. So she has closed down. She tried to explain herself, but it did not help. So we're going to go ahead and watch her explanation video. And we're going to judge it together and see, like, you know, what do y'all think of what she's trying to say? The connection is janky, though, but whatever. Go ahead and pull this up. So this is her, Miss Sweetly Seasoned. be older i be doing this too we, we, we're always confused when we start live streams we are never ready to just, oh hey y'all <laughs> shout out to all the millennials out there and all the gen uh what is that gen x shall we be so confused but let's keep going have to fast forward because she's gonna sit there for another three minutes waiting for people girl you ain't got that many fans and i'm not a thief okay hold on go back a little bit <sighs> okay you guys first of all i want to say i'm not a scammer and i'm not a thief i am just a person who's trying to make it every day. I want to give a shout out to my son for marketing me. Um, I don't know how many of you guys follow him, but because of him, that is the reason why Keith Lee came to visit me. Now, when I arrived that day, the only reason why Sherelle was there and I don't know her that well. I don't know her that well. The only reason why she was there is because my son asked her to be there, I guess. I don't know. And then she said that she wanted to meet Keith Lee, so she just wanted to be there. So it wasn't that she was working for me. She really just wanted to be there for Keith Lee. Um. But I want to give a shout out to her. Um, okay, so what? And you two and your son also wanted to be there for Keith Lee. Anyway, you know, because her and my son. Yeah, her connection is bad. Child. These, these Gen X connections. See, frozen. Okay, they went on. Facebook Live, Instagram, I don't know what platform it was, and they were marketing me, trying to get him out there to see me. So I still want to thank her for doing that. And yes, she do deserve to be compensated for that, but she will not even talk to me about that, you know? Um, now, getting to the nitty gritty. So we all out there. And my son called this guy I guess that's her brother. I didn't know him, never seen him, to come cut his hair. And he came out there to cut his hair. He plugged his thing into my generator, and he cut his hair. I'm in a food truck. I'm going crazy because I know he's coming, and I'm trying to get... So I'm not fully aware of what's going on outside, y'all. So next thing I know, I see a girl running... And Sherelle running, they hug, and I'm like, who, you know, who is that? Come find out she was supposed to be braiding no girl hair. But 
she told her to come out there because she didn't want to miss Keith Lee. So when Keith Lee did arrive, it looked as if they were with me. And it looked as if they was doing free. First of all, why is it like the fact that hair and food is being talked about in the same sentence? I, it's creeping me out. I don't want anybody braiding and cutting hair near food. It, like the fact that this is even a conversation about hair and food, I, I just find it comical. <laughs> This Gen X connection is making me mad. I feel like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King with so many hate calls all night long <laughs> threatening me. Y'all, the internet ain't shit. Why y'all threatening this Gen X lady with this struggle phone? Now, I know some of you guys is not going to be on my side because y'all her phone her phone is going out phone is going crazy I just it's been like that I'm trying to get this out I know <laughs> Some of you guys is not going to be on my side because you are very big fans of hers. I hear that she's a big TikToker. I don't know much about her. All I know is I built this business from the ground up. Me and my son. And for her to even think because she called somebody out there just to braid her hair, that she deserved a thousand dollars and try to make it seem like. Now I could see if when Keith Lee said, "Give that barber a thousand dollars for a free haircut," he should have said, "Anybody, come on, who wants a haircut for free? Come on!" Then he would have deserved it. Then that would have made him with me because now you're helping me. You're shining on me. This man was not with me. He was only solely there because my son called him to cut my hair. <laughs> Seriously, season turned quite sour. <laughs> she mad about that money, boy. It was not there. I didn't invite him. He didn't even drop free haircuts. Now, I would love to do the right thing. And I feel like I did do the right thing. Now, for her, and then I told her, on top of that, I didn't even have the money. He paid with a credit card. The money just hit the bank account today. I'm going to give my son what he deserves. And I would give her some of what she, because she did market me that morning, but that's all she did. <laughs> and he, I don't even know who he is. The barber, that's my son's head. He wasn't with me. <laughs> Keith Lee, I heard he thought that they were my kids. They're not my kids. Th those were my son's friends. But this ain't even about money, y'all. This is about the principle. <laughs> How dare you come and make it seem like this was something that it wasn't? You were supposed to be out there to support Sweetly Season, a struggling business. And then you turn around and make it seem like it was something that it wasn't? I dare you. I dare you. And yet, yeah, for everybody, I'm just, I'm getting emotional because y'all have no idea how much work the effort I put into my business. And I don't know if this is going to make me or break me. I don't know, but I know I got God. And God is... Oh, here we go with the Southerners. I got God! They always want to bring up God, child. Ma'am, 
Regardless, your son invited them to this event. They, he invited them to this whole Keith Lee thing. They didn't just show up on their own. Your son invited them. And from what the other girl, Sherelle, was saying is that the son invited uh, his friends because the mama needed help. And so Sherelle invited her brother so he can, you know, be attached to, you know, the viral moment. I get that. But my thing is, as an adult, like... What is the problem with looking out for your son's friends? Like, I don't, like, I guess I'm, like, confused about that. Just look out for them. They're young people. He could be out here robbing people. He could be out here jacking cars. He could be out here pimping. Instead, he's doing haircuts. Just bless that young man. That probably would have been the most money he had made that whole week. I just don't see the big deal in just saying, okay, even if he wasn't here for me or he was just trying to get some clout, it was still your son's friend. Your son invited him and Sherelle. So why not just look out for him? And Sherelle even said she didn't need the money. She was like, you can keep the money. Obviously, you need it more than I do. So she was really going to, she was really going to come out of pocket $1,000. But look how upset she's getting with this damn Gen X phone. They told me to go to school and go to school again. I been flirting ever since. I have won chef awards. I have done a lot of things, and I have a lot of upcoming things that I plan on doing. I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to keep Lee to tell me, after him knowing the truth now, if that man tell me to give them the money, I'll give it to him. Because I've been doing, I'm in for doing the right thing. If he tell me, to give them that money, knowing that they was not with me, and, and just let y'all know she's a scammer. Okay, let me pause this real quick. Why does Keith Lee have to tell her what to do? If Keith Lee tells me to give them that money, I'll give them that money. Keith Lee initially told you to give them that money. Why does he have to reiterate that? It wasn't your money. It was his money to do what he felt necessary at that moment and to bless who he wanted to bless at that moment. Why are you so upset? Nobody should have to tell you to do the right thing. He already instructed you on what to do. You chose otherwise. Now you're saying, that, now you're saying this young girl is a scammer. But she wasn't a scammer when she was in your food truck helping you. She wasn't a scammer when she called her brother down there to help and, you know, with everything going on is what kind of caught Keith, Lee, Keith Lee's eye. He already told me to. He told me, yeah, he did. He said, he listen closely. Go to the video. Go to the video and listen closely to what he said. He says, give that barber the uh uh a thousand dollars for free haircut. There was no free haircut. My son paid him. There was no free haircut. He wasn't even there for that. He was never there for that. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? He was never there. Now, let me be fair. I do get her point a little bit here because Keith Lee did say, hey, here goes $1,000. Give out some free haircuts. And he didn't do that. He, he wanted the money to himself and was still charging for haircuts. So he did not follow Keith Lee, you know, what, what he had asked to be done. But in the same breath, she did the same thing. Keith Lee also told her, give out free food for the rest of the day because this is more than enough money to cover, you know what I'm saying, your expenses, whatever. And Sherelle said that as soon as, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as Keith Lee left, she started charging customers after like the third customer she was charging. So you and the barber kind of did the same thing, except he didn't get a chance to pocket his money. Y'all kept the money, and neither one of y'all provided the free services that Keith Lee asked for y'all to provide. So I will acknowledge what she's saying on that part, to be fair. She frozen again? Oh, she's reading. The free food. I, that's a lie. That's a lie. I gave, I, I supposed to close at five o'clock, but Keith Lee came right before that. So, I set out to nine o'clock. 
I pray for to everybody. That is a lie. That is a lie. And then for uh, for when Keith Lee did came, I don't understand why that girl jumped in the pictures when she is not a part of us. She should not have been in any of the pictures. She didn't even belong there. Oh, honey, I don't, baby, baby. Tears, I ain't trying to cry for a pity. I serve a God. I serve a God, and I, I'm going to do the right thing. All right, her phone fucking up again. I'm over this. This is the, I'm over her 11 minute rant. Next. All right. So y'all just heard that. Um, she has since closed down her business. So she basically messed up her own blessing. She really could have just did the right thing and took care of everybody. Her giving a thousand dollars away to that barber. Because she wanted to be greedy because she felt like, you know, she didn't need to follow what Keith Lee wanted and she felt that he wasn't deserving of it. Now this is like really messed up for her. She's had to close down her business. She's been harassed. Um, and I'm sure it's probably messed it up for her son because her son is also on social media. And I know he was trying to build his little fan base and stuff. So I'm sure that has made him look bad because he really stuck his neck out on the line for his mom. He was so proud of his mom. I just don't think this was a good look. This was a blessing for her. And for her to like squander a blessing over $1,000 is silly because she would have made that money back tenfold. She would have made that money back tenfold. We've all seen the Keith Lee effect. So she really dropped the ball with this one. Now I see a bunch of money bags in the chat. So let me scroll up. I'm sure money bag Mo is in the building. Oh my goodness. Moneybag Mo just donated $499.99. Moneybag Mo, thank you so much once again for always coming through and just showing love in my streams. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I really hope you come to my million subscriber party because I would love to meet you and just really thank you face to face because you always come out and you show love. Like I said, I don't ever ask for any super chats or anything. So anybody sending anything here, it means a lot. It, it does because I understand the economy's hard. People are going through it. So I appreciate everybody who just comes to my channel and supports what I do and just enjoys what I do. It means a lot to me. So thank you so much, Monique. I appreciate you, sis. She's just so sweet, I swear. So people are saying that Keith Lee responded. Um, Blatino Boy sent $10. What's up, Blatino Boy? He says, uh, ma'am, it's giving Joanne the scammer. You're a liar, a scammer, a fraud. Keith Lee gave you specific instructions with that money. And you're giving us mush mouth excuses. <laughs> oh, y'all are a mess, I swear. So let's go ahead. Let me see. So they're saying Keith Lee just updated. Can y'all post the link so I can please post the link in the chat real quick? Uh-uh, not y'all trying to get with Monique. Tell me, Monique, you like women. Uh-uh, look at all the lesbians in here. Oh, y'all are messy. Y'all leave my woman alone. <laughs> <laughs> they did the same thing to, uh, to Agent Matt when he used to be in here sending super chats. They done went and hunted him down and was asking him for money. I'm like, ooh, y'all are messy. Y'all are messy. <laughs> it's on TikTok? Okay, let me see if I can pull it up here. Keith Lee's TikTok. Give me just a second. Because I do want to know what Keith Lee got to say about all this. Okay, okay. He has a lot of videos. Let me. Y'all gonna have to guide me because y'all not gonna be on TikTok like that. So let me remove this real quick. Um... Let me pull up Keith Lee's TikTok. And let me know what video. I don't even know. Is, okay, that's the, is this the one? Hold on. Y'all know which one? It's the first one? Because this one is pinned, but it says pizzeria. Let 
Look at my old ass trying to figure out TikTok. I'm like, this one is pinned. I don't know which one to click on. I'm like, really like, <laughs> the fourth? Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I told y'all, millennials and Gen X, we be confused, child, when it comes to social media. Okay. It's this one. To be honest, there's not much to talk about, but there are a few conflated and confused things that's going around about the situation. So let's talk about them. Three days ago, me and my family went to Sweetly Season food truck. Number one, nobody had any idea we was coming. They found out we was in Dallas, like everybody else found out we was in Dallas, because we was posting videos in Dallas. So in hopes of us coming, they had t-shirts made and they was on live all day. So me and my family wasn't in cahoots with none of this. We was all under the impression that they were a team and this was a normal routine for them. The barber being there, the braider being there, family being there, a lot of people being there. This is our first time here. We are customers. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Number two, I was never under the impression that haircuts was free. Again, my family was watching the lives. We knew that he was cutting hair for $40. So when we walked up and I said, I want to get $1,000 to the barber to do free haircuts and $1,000 to the braider to braid hair, it was because in the original video, the son said it was slow due to marketing. That's marketing. God willingly, after we post the video, there will be a line out the door. If there's a line out the door and there's a barber and a braider doing hair while people are waiting, that's marketing. So again, it's in a hood. You play some music, you cutting hair, you braiding hair, you're all sitting out, you're having fun. It's a parking lot barbecue. So again, we don't know the behind the scenes if they knew each other, if they didn't know each other. And the reason why I didn't pay everybody individually, the interaction that you see looked longer than what it was. It was really only like a five minute interaction. But then at five minutes, 30 to 40 people pulled up. They was pulling up and drove. That parking lot was getting deep, fast. And for me and my family's safety in general, I don't never carry cash around. And nine times out of 10, if we tip, we always do it through the POS system. And even if we wanted to do it a different way, Jail and Apple Pay wasn't an option because it was four or five people at the same time on live. So for safety reasons, they wouldn't be able to say their phone numbers or their personal information out loud. And as far as them taking my phone and putting a number in on sale themselves, I wouldn't hand my personal phone to nobody. So the POS system was the option that made the most sense. I learned through this journey that sometimes it's deeper than the food, it's deeper than the marketing, it's deeper than the customer service. And this is one of those cases in my opinion. Sweetly season got a lot to figure out and I thank God in advance that they do figure it out. The last thing I'm gonna touch on is the son is misconstruing something that I said and I don't appreciate it. After I said out loud in detail what we deemed the money to be used towards, I also said y'all can divvy it out how y'all feel necessary. Meaning after the money hits because it's a POS system, it don't hit the same day. Y'all can send it out through Apple Pay, through Zelle, through Cash App, through Check, through Cash. However, y'all feel necessary to spread it amongst the team. I thought and I still think that that's a very clear statement, but it's being misconstrued, in my opinion, intentionally misconstrued that I said and the mom and the son can say who get the money and who don't get the money. <laughs> So Keith Lee did tell her to distribute the money how she felt necessary. I never said that. Regardless of what was going on behind the scenes, I felt on my heart to do what we did. So for the mom to go on the back end and disregard where my heart was at and what I felt like God was telling me to do in that moment and distribute the money how she felt necessary is 100% wrong in my opinion. I see the memes and I see the jokes, but I am not in the business of shutting businesses down. Her actions did not sit right with y'all and her customer base. That resulted in the situation that she in today. We just ate the food and left a tip praying in advance that everybody in the situation stays safe. That's my biggest concern. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. To be honest, there's not much to talk about. But All right. So y'all just heard what Keith Lee had to say. Let me come back on the screen here. Yeah, I find that just really, really interesting. Um, he made some good points. I don't see how they try to twist it around on Keith Lee. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how is this all of a sudden his fault or he misconstrued? We all heard what he said. He said, you keep 2000 give 1000 to the braider, give 1000 to the barber. You know, and again, if he's walking into a situation, he doesn't know these people. He's just walking into a situation. And not one person said, hey, they're not with us. They're doing their own thing. They had, you know, they were just so excited to get this money. They didn't even speak up for themselves and say who was a part of what. You know, so for her to try and turn around and for the son to try and turn around and act like, you know, we didn't have to, or this is, and, and I don't even understand what the son's argument is because these were his friends that he invited. So now you're acting shady towards your friends. And I get it because his mom's being under attack and he's trying to clean up his mom's mess. The whole situation is insane. It really is. I think they were just being greedy and it blew up in their face. And like I said, all this for an additional thousand dollars because the girl said you could keep my thousand, just pay my brother. All that for $1,000 just does not make any sense because she really could be receiving so many blessings right now due to this. So 
Thank y'all for letting me know that Keith Lee finally spoke on this 32 minutes ago. The whole thing is a mess. And I'm seeing a lot of folks saying that he needs to stop going and go help black businesses. And I just hate that because, again, he helps a wide range of businesses, right? Black, white, you know, Asian, stuff like that. But um, I don't like that because of her situation. They're making it seem like, you know, all black business owners and restaurant owners they're all shady. He's always having issues with the black businesses like in Atlanta and stuff like that. I don't think that's fair because you have a lot of people who do good business. You have a lot of black, you know, entrepreneurs, restaurant owners who do good business. So it's not cool to be like, well, just stop going to patronize black businesses. So, yeah, the whole thing is just a mess. It's a mess. Um, let me read some more super chats here. Um, Uh, ER sent five says I've been a fan for years and years. Love you too. Love you too. Thank you so much for the support. Bianca said nine ninety nine says she didn't close down. She made a video saying she wants to give the money, but Sherelle don't want it anymore. The barber wasn't there when Keith Lee gave the money. He was gonna return the next day and do it for free. Oh, so Sherelle don't even want the money no more. So yeah, the lady messed herself up. Yeah, people were saying on, um, they were leaving comments saying that if you go onto Google, that her restaurant says it's closed on Google. So maybe she put it as being closed on Google so people could stop giving her bad reviews because she was getting bombed with all types of like one star reviews, um, I believe on Google and Yelp. So that might be why people think that she's closed down. But thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Destiny, the goddess. Says she's lying. She made a video the same day, making people aware that she was closing early. Her son got a haircut before Keith got there, and she shut the truck down before the guy could give out free haircuts. Wow. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Amy Diaz sent 999 says the lady really blocked her blessings because Keith Lee came to my local bakery in Brooklyn, and after his video, the bakery has had long lines outside every weekend. Wow. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Desmond sent 499 says a thousand dollars is not even real money in 2024. No, we're not gonna do that, Desmond, honey. Okay, all money is real money in 2024. Hell, you seen them drunk ass barbs that were sending money last week? I think that bitch sent about fifty dollars worth of super chats just to cuss me out. Shit. Guess what? That real hater money spent just fine. Okay, so no, all money. We're not gonna do that. Act like a thousand dollars is nothing. It's still money, and especially when you're struggling and you have your own business. Like, people don't understand when you're an entrepreneur and you work for yourself, everybody's your boss, and you're really dependent on the public, you know what I'm saying, to sustain your livelihood. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to diminish that. You know what I mean? There's still a lot of money. It may not, maybe you balling, honey. Maybe you, you know, a, a triple millionaire. I don't know. But $1,000, that's still a lot to me. Okay, hell, five dollars is a lot to me. Shit, let me be walking down the street and I see a five dollar bill. You know how we all used to do back in the day? You take that foot, that shoe, bam, and you put it on that bill. You slide that bitch over. It wasn't just me. Let me see some money on the ground. Shit, I'm pulling out my foot, covering it up. Don't do me, boo. <laughs> used to do that back in the day. I know we don't find as much cash as we used to back in the day. But, oh, we used to love looking on the ground for money. Loose change. But, um, yeah, when you're an entrepreneur, somebody said you're good for it. You know what? <laughs> I'm not messing with you. I'm not messing with you barbs today. <laughs> somebody said to use her good foot. I sure did. I'm just, bam. bars i swear y'all are a mess yeah i haven't found money in a long time but remember we was walking like back in the day when we were younger you there was always especially living in the hood shit crackhead was always dropping some type of money there was always some money floating around we push each other you put the person who put their foot on that money first it was technically theirs but then your friend might push you and then the money's exposed and everybody goes jumping for it Oh, these kids would never understand. Y'all new kids, y'all Jen Elford kids, y'all would never understand what it is to find cash on the ground and everybody is fighting over it, child. 
like a damn football game, just piling on top of each other trying to get that money. Because <laughs> they're used to everything being digital. Apple Pay, Cash App, uh-uh. Wasn't nothing better than why. I remember one time I was walking and we was broke as hell, child. Broke. And I found 50 bucks on the ground. Woo! Me and my girl fought over that one. Boom! Boom! We was pushing each other, but I got it. I got it last. And we went to the mall, you know what I'm saying? Got some Cinnabons and shit. <laughs> you, know, you, got, you know, once you get it, it's free money. You got to look out for your crew. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was back then. Y'all would never, oh my God, y'all would never experience that. So no, $1,000 is still a lot of money, even in 2024. So I just think that, you know, honestly, she should have just given him the money, regardless of how she felt. You know, even if she felt the way, rant and rave with, with your son, you know, be upset behind the scenes. But publicly, you want to put on a good face for your business. You know, and especially, like the son says, she went to culinary school. She's won all types of awards. She's obviously very talented and good at what she does, which is cooking. Because Keith Lee gave her a good review. You know, they enjoyed her food. So I think she should have just did what she was supposed to do. Don't do it now that you're getting backlash. You know, that's what she messed up. Now that she's getting backlash and people are mad at her, now she wants to step up and say, well, fine, here goes $1,000. Well, no, now we don't want it. So she messed up. She blocked her own blessings. But for people to try and twist this around and blame Keith Lee is silly. He did nothing wrong. He literally showed her business and the other people out there love. You know, so the whole situation is a shame. Let's see here. So I want to hit on this topic really quick here. So if you guys do not know, Universal Music Group, they are pulling songs all over TikTok. So this is a hot mess. One of my most viral TikToks, I ended up getting like a news article written about this. Me and my oldest son, um, people don't believe that that's my child. You know, we look like siblings. And so that video, I got an alert the other day that that video is muted. I don't even know what the damn song was. It was something like, nope, nope, yes, something. We're like, it was like a trend that we did like in 2020. And so that song is muted and a lot of songs are muted now um, on TikTok. So we're going to go ahead and watch this really quick here as to why everything is becoming muted. Charlie wants some more shit. Hold on, TikTok. See if I can pull it back up on here. Okay, here goes a story about it. Um, okay, we're going to watch this one. The world's top music label. Okay, we're gonna watch this one real quick. Bulls is taking its artists off TikTok after failing to reach a contract agreement. Universal Music Group claims the Chinese owned platform tried to effectively bully them into a deal far less than what they say is fair market value. UMG represents all the big names. We're talking about Taylor Swift. Drake, Adele, many others. Uh, they claim TikTok is trying to build a music-based business without paying for it. But the battle is also over more complicated issues like protections from artificial intelligence. Joining us now here in Studio 57 is Dan Waitley, senior media reporter at Business Insider. So Dan, why did these negotiations fall apart? Yeah, so these negotiations take months, actually, but uh, it kind of came into the public sphere this week when UMG released a letter complaining about things like AI and not being paid enough. Um, the contract actually expired yesterday, which is why we're starting to see music being pulled today. And what are the big concerns from Universal Music Group? Because of any of us who've tried to kind of, you know, look at TikTok and make some videos and see if they go viral, hit, hit, um, know that it's very much music based and people put music in their videos and they can earn an income as well. So what's the real point of the clash? Just the dollar amount? I mean, it comes down to money, as most things do. Yeah. So I think, you know, Universal has watched TikTok grow into this massive business. They are, you know, a real competitor to things like Instagram and YouTube now. And they want a cut of that revenue. And mm -hmm. so, yes, they're talking about AI-generated music, but 
a lot of this is about just getting more money. Who gets hurt more by this? Because a lot of artists actually get discovered on TikTok. Is it the artists or is it TikTok or is it the users? I mean, it kind of hurts everyone. They, they need each other. You know, I've described them as frenemies in the past because, uh, you know, TikTok is such an important discovery tool for music. A lot of people find artists old and new there. Um, and so uh, Universal needs TikTok. But at the same time, you know, TikTok, uh, sorry, TikTok also needs Universal. We're talking about Taylor Swift, right? We're talking right. about Drake. These are not small artists. These are megastars. What yeah. happens next? Well, they're bargaining, I assume. Um, a lot of it's happening behind closed doors, so I'm not privy to it. But yeah, I mean, I think they're going to try to race to get some kind of agreement. And it's not just about the TikTok app. There's also a music streaming app in, under consideration, TikTok mm -hmm. Music. and. So this deal is going to be multifaceted, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Dan Waitley, thank you. All yeah. right, next. I'm mush mouth and shit. Um, anyways, uh, I think the whole situation, it goes back down to um, the music industry is dying. You know, money's funny. Hollywood, the entertainment industry is struggling right now. And uh, thank y'all. It was E40, so thank y'all for pointing that out. The song that they ended up muting on my TikTok page was E40's song. Um, yeah, his voice was very annoying. Just just a bunch of mush mouth bullshit. Get to the point, spit it out. Um, basically, the entertainment industry is going broke. This is from music to Hollywood. Like I said, you know, Taraja and running around on a hobo tour crying for no reason. The money is not money. And they see a lot of these influencers making money making good money off of TikTok and Snapchat too. And we'll talk about Snapchat in just a second. So they feel like a lot of these people like Charlie D'Amelio and um, child insert whatever pretty white girl here um, who danced. A lot of them blew up from, you know, doing them little dances and stuff. All that shit. <laughs> you know, they were doing all them little weird dances to, you know, popular songs and that's how they blew up. And technically, um, as long as a song is under about 15 seconds, about 30 to 15 seconds, it's, it's copyright free. You're able to dance and sing to it. It just can't be past, I believe, 30 seconds. It used to be 15. I think they bumped it up to 30. Um, I might be wrong, but they've seen a lot of these regular quote unquote, nobodies blow up from dancing to, you know, their artists' songs and they've received the benefits and Warner Music has not, but in the same breath, a lot of artists are now on TikTok. You know, let's not forget a lot of these dance crazes that start on TikTok are now being curated by the artists. So the artists will come out with a song like the Tusi Slide when Drake came out with that song and then the TikTokers made a dance to it and that really helped blow up, that really helped blow up Drake's song. So a lot of these artists are benefiting as well, right? Because now the kids are doing the dance which is reminding them to go stream the song and support their faves. So again, I feel like the, the record companies, they want a bigger cut. They want a bigger cut. And this is what's going on. Like I've been saying this for a long time. This is what's going on on social media and that eventually social media will be, you'll have to pay for every platform that you visit. YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff. Because what happened is you had a lot of these celebrities and I've said this before, like Kylie Jenner, she was able to use her platform, Instagram, to really become a quote unquote billionaire. We know that that has since been disputed, but we're just going back to like 2016, 2017, right? She has millions of followers, a lot of which Emily has since discovered were bots, but we're not even gonna go there. But in with the bots, there are real people that follow Kylie. So imagine using your platform with millions of people to advertise your product to. All she has to do is literally put, put a post up, new lip kit, Halloween lip kit, Christmas lip kit. So this is all free advertising for Kylie Jenner. Her fans run out, they buy her makeup in droves, and she's never had to spend a dime advertising. She didn't have to pay for a commercial slot. She didn't have to pay for a Super Bowl slot. So a lot of these companies were losing money. They're seeing people on our platform selling their stuff and they're making millions of dollars. And meanwhile, I'm the dev, you know, anytime something goes wrong with TikTok or Instagram, we got to jump up and fix it. And we're not making a million dollars a year. 
So it's like a jealousy thing, right? So now what they've done is that they made it where if you want to promote stuff. So like, let's say I'm promoting my tea. Y'all know I have my teas on Amazon, shameless plug. If you have not gotten any of the teas, they're available on Amazon. So check, check it out. So let's say I want to promote my teas and I post it on Instagram. Now in this day and age, in 2024, this started about two years ago. It's not going to go to all my followers. None of my posts go to all of my followers. Even when I post regular blogs, it does not go to everybody that follows you. It goes to about 25% of your followers. So the way that uh, Instagram decided to start making money off of this is if you want all of your followers to see your post or whatever you're selling, you need to buy ads. Because you notice you don't have to follow certain people, but you're going to see them ads in between your feed. So that's how they're making their money now. And so again, it's like, this is just another way for a lot of these social media sites to hustle. And they feel like they're not making any money. They're not making as much with TikTok. Like the influencers are benefiting, the random person who's dancing to it, they're benefiting. The artists are somewhat benefiting, but the record label, they want a bigger cut. So this is all it boils down to is money. And it's because of the Kylie Jenners of the world who became so-called billionaires off of these platforms. And then once, you know, everybody else started trying to do it and use their platforms to promote their stuff, then they always move the goalposts. You know, whenever regular schmuggler people start doing it, then the goalpost is moved. <laughs> now it's, oh no, we're not going to promote your shit to all your followers. Now you have to pay us for advertising. And I've done the advertising packages before. You know, I've done them to promote my tea line and stuff like that. And when I had Dope Beauty. So we've definitely used the advertising. But yeah, it's crazy because... When Kylie did it, she didn't have to pay for anything and made tons of money for free. So, yeah, it's very interesting, all of that that's going on. So if you're on TikTok and you're noticing your songs on your videos are gone and stuff like that, that is why. And I feel like if Universal ends up winning this, more record labels are going to do the same thing. Like right now, it's Universal Music Group because they're like the biggest record label. But trust and believe, more will follow suit. Because monkey see, monkey do. And they all want a piece of the pie. So that's going to be very, very interesting. Okay, we have over 8,000 people in here. Please get the likes up like Valerie is saying in the chat. Thank you, Valerie. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Miss Aaliyah Johnson says, just stopping by to say hello. Keep up the good work. We love and appreciate you, lovely T. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you as well. Uh, Queenie sent $10, says, people really get greedy when money goes into their hands. It's sad. Looking great, tea fizzle Thank you, sis. She bought it back to the tea fizzle days. Appreciate you. Uh, Valerie is saying that the chat is saying that Lizzo was shot. I'm seeing people say that. Let's see if it's real or just a rumor. Was Lizzo shot? Shot by who? The only thing that's coming up is Lizzo drunkenly shoots her shot at Chris Evans. Who shot Lizzo? Y'all got a link? It's not true? People lying? Okay, it's not true. Y'all don't see anything coming up about her getting shot. That's silly. Like, who, who, what beef she got? She ain't got no damn beef. Next, <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, India said it's not just TikTok. They took down my IG videos too. Oh, wow. So it's also on Instagram from what they're saying. It's also on Instagram. Uh, Flower Juice says, hey, T, I pay for Spotify Premium. In these podcasts, still find a way to include ads. 10 minutes of an episode be ads. <laughs> Love from Japan. Yeah. They are squeezing in ads any way they can. Um, it's something else I pay for too, premium. And they're, they embed stuff in there regardless. But yeah, a lot of these platforms are struggling, unfortunately. Um, Mucha De Niro sent $9.99 and sending you love and blessings. You keep these YouTube, YouTube streets lit because lovely tees law around here looking gorgeous as usual. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending this Friday with me. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Guy Matson, $50, says, hey, sis. Hey, chat. What's up, Discord fam? Sorry I'm late. Just got home from the Fire Academy. I know everybody has been enjoying the stream. About to hit the like button and show some love to our girl. So you must have got in then. So you made it to the Fire Academy. Congratulations to you. That is so awesome. I know you've been trying to be a firefighter for a while now, so congrats. That is awesome. I love hearing good news like that. I do. Um, okay, so let me see. We got to get on this last story. I think we got two more stories. Okay, yep. Um, Gen Z is aging worse than millennials. And I believe that. So there's a guy who went viral the other day named Jordan The Stallion. I saw him on IG, but he's really funny. And even The Rock commented on his page. We're going to watch this video together. But he went viral because they're saying that um, Gen Z, y'all look way older than millennials. And I have to agree. I think Gen Z looks very, very grown for their age. They, they do. So we're going to go ahead and watch this really quick. Apparently, Gen Z is like aging really rapidly. It is mainly because of the stress. Come here. We live in a time nowadays where millennials look way younger for their age, while Gen Z looks way older for their age. If you don't believe me, I'm Gen Z. Get closer. I am Gen Z and nobody ever believes me. When my mom and I walk out in public, people think that my mom is my younger sister. Right. When I tell people, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my family, they think I'm talking about my children. I don't have kids. Right? I'm talking about my parents. I'm still the child. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Zendaya is older than me. Tom Holland is older than me. That's You know what I'm saying right now? There was one time I wanted an autograph from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Right? I was standing for hours for this autograph, and when he walked up to me, I said, can you please sign this poster? It's for Jordan. Right? He then took it and put, dear Jordan, your dad is a great guy. He stood out here for hours and then gave it back to me. And before I can correct him, he looked at me and said, times were way more difficult back when we were kids. Am I right? And then he tapped my shoulder and left. And Dwayne is 52. I am 26. Do you, what, what I'm saying is so Gen Z definitely looks older. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> like that video cracks me up. And um, so this has been like a big debate online. You know, like why does Gen Z look so old? Um, they look so grown. And I think part of it is because like this new generation, they just, they've been kind of just raised to like make themselves look older. And I'm not saying that when we were young, we weren't trying to make ourselves look older as well. Um, we maybe tried with our clothes, but we didn't really try as much with makeup. Like it wasn't popular when we were growing up, well, at least where I lived in the Midwest, to just have on like a whole face full of makeup. Like makeup was really for adults. Like I don't really know girls who went to school with a bunch of makeup on when we were growing up. The most we ever put on our skin was just shea butter or Vaseline. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's face was greasy as fuck in the early, in the mid 90s. Everybody had that greasy ass face. Um, you know, it was like a little bit of, you know, Vaseline, a little bit of cocoa butter. And that was really it. We didn't wear like foundation and like all that was for like grown folks. Like our moms, our aunties. You know, you might put on like a little bit of eyeliner. You know, people had eyeliner. You might wear some like Bonnie Bell lip gloss. But it wasn't all this stuff. Like I don't even understand half the stuff that these girls put on their face toner and you know face plumper and drunk elephant and retinol and and it's like there's certain stuff now that you have to use now you know now that i'm getting older like they say like hyaluronic acid however the hell you pronounce that word and retinol and i've tried some of that and some of it's just like oh it feels weird on my skin let me just go back to using what the fuck i've been using shea butter cocoa butter just natural stuff i just feel like Gen Z and Gen, the new generation, Gen Alpha, they're being raised to be too grown. I mean, even looking at Kylie Jenner, you know, she started really messing with her face when she was like in her late teens. And now you see her fillers are drooping. You know, she, she looks way older. She does not look like she's in her 20s. Alabama Barker, she looks like she's damn near 25. And this girl's what, like just turned 18. So... I feel like it's it's insane. Yes, eighth graders walking around with whole lace front wigs. 
If you were bald headed back in the day, you just bald headed. You put your you put your little bald headed ass ponytail up on your head and you fanned it out. Y'all remember all the bald headed girls had that little fanned out ponytail and you called it a day. And if somebody wanted to mess with you because you was bald headed, then you had to know how to fight. You were no wigs. You just had to live within the skin you were in. People have freckles. I don't even see freckles no more. I said, what happened to all the freckle face people? Remember books like Freckle Juice? And then I realized all the people who had freckles when we were growing up, they cover them. You don't see kids with freckles no more like that. Everybody got on makeup. Because I'm like, damn, the freckles disappear? And then it got so bad, I'm seeing people tattooing freckles on their face. I'm like, are freckles that obsolete now that people are tattooing freckles on their face? Even like people who have pimples and acne, you don't really see people out nowadays with acne. I mean, my homegirl was talking about this one time. Like, do you ever see like acne ridden people like at Walmart or just, you know, at the store, at the club? You don't. Because all these young kids got on makeup. Even the guys wear makeup now. So you don't. So now we live in a generation where everything has to be perfect. The filters, the pictures. When we were growing up, we had disposable cameras. Everybody did that same pose. And you had one time. Five, four, three, two, snap. And you better be ready. What no redos, none of that stuff. So I just feel like this generation, they do have a lot more stress. And um, they have a lot more pressure to look older than their age and to have their body done and to look perfect. And, you know, a lot of people in Gen Z get breast implants and get their bodies done younger. Even a lot of the guys, too, are pressured to look a certain way. You know, they need to look like bodybuilders and have their bodies on point and be in the gym and drink all these supplements. Whereas, you know, the average, when I was 21, 22, the average 21, 22-year-old guy was just skinny, scrawny, and that was okay. Now I be seeing these kids, I'm like, Gen Z, these, these Gen Z dudes be looking grown. Y'all don't look like the, like the, you know, the late 20 years when I was in my 20s. They be looking grown as hell. And they love millennial women. But like Gen Z dudes, they do look a lot older. I have been fooled while I'm, you know, dating somebody and I'm thinking, you know, we're closer in age and they're not even 30 yet. It's like, well, damn, what the hell is going on here? How do we look the same age? I'm just saying. Yeah, we have him. That dude does not look like he's 26. He literally looks like he's 36, if not older. <laughs> he does. Yes, honey. Somebody said I'm, I'm giving cougar vibes. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm going to say this. Gen Z girls, y'all got trouble. Because the Gen Z dudes really like millennial women. They just do. They like older women. And the Gen Z girls, they like older guys. So I just think like y'all's generation is in trouble. The Gen Z girls, they're going after the ballers and all that stuff. The Gen Z dudes are like, whatever. They're going after the older women. It's it's funny. It's just really, really funny. Yeah, Jordan looks like he definitely got four kids and he's stressed from child support. And he ain't got not one child. He looks stressed from child support. He do. So I don't know what it is, but yeah, I do find like a lot of um, a lot of millennials do look younger than Gen Z. And I just think part of that is just, you know, the fact that we didn't have a lot of access to stuff. Like we just, we don't really care, especially like Gen X. Gen X really don't give a fuck. Gen X gonna step out here. Gen Xing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they really don't care because they were raised, you know, by the boomers. And the boomers, it wasn't about all that. Now, but then with that being said, if you look at pictures of boomers back when they were in high school, they, they look old. They look like they've been through some stuff. Go back and look at boomers from like the 50s. They were like 19, but they look like they were 45. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know, child. I do not know. But, um, you know, is it everybody in Gen X? No, but a lot of Gen X, they do look a lot older. Like, there's no reason why I can still party with like Gen X girls, like my Gen X cousins. We can all go to the club and I literally look like I'm the same age as them. And I'm like the auntie of the group. 
And at first I used to be like, should I be embarrassed? No, they should be embarrassed. Fuck that. I'm going to look young for my age. Y'all shouldn't be feeling away. Because y'all should not be looking like we're around the same age. It's weird. It's weird. But I don't know, I don't know if it's the food, if it's just the way that y'all carry yourselves. Y'all carry yourselves just very, very adult-like, very mature. I think because a lot of y'all have access, you know, to social media, the internet. So y'all can carry conversations that we probably couldn't even carry 20 years ago because we didn't have Google. So all we knew was just what we knew in our in our social circles or, you know, what we might have read at the library. But y'all have, like, instant information at y'all's tips. So y'all are able to carry yourselves a lot, you know, a lot more grown. But I'd be shocked, though. I'd be shocked. Because even when I throw my parties, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm, you know, my big age. But I'd be fitting right in with everybody. So... Yes, honey. <laughs> Shout out to Gen X and Millennials. We are giving Gen Z a run for their money. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me read some of these super chats here. Um, let's see here. Summer says, hey T, did you see the video with Rihanna? She said she's aging. No, I haven't seen that video. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. I haven't seen it. Uh, Tiniest Kiwi sent $10, says, congratulations on the lovely tea app, Colin show, hello from New Jersey, thanks for keeping me updated on all the tea, you are so welcome, thank you for stopping through, sis, appreciate you, uh, Orchards, Endler sent four ninety nine says, ah, tea, get written A and acne fucked all the way off, yeah, I don't, I really do not see, like, people with bad skin anymore when I go out. Maybe, you know, y'all got more money now. Like, back in the day, like, people didn't have no money for a dermatologist. So if you had bad skin and, and potholes in your skin, we just, you know, you just had to deal with it. We loved you. And a lot of people could fight. So you're not going to just come up to somebody with bad skin and talk shit. You talk shit about their skin, you're going to get hit. So that was the difference, too. We didn't have social media. So you had to, like, you know, walk a fine line when you were clowning somebody. Couldn't just go around clowning folks. A lot of them people who had, you know, things like that, like a bunch of freckles, you know, potholes in their skin, bad teeth, they could fight. You had to fight. If you have messed up teeth, you had to know how to fight. If you was bald-headed, you had to know how to fight. So they didn't really get picked on like that. I'm just saying. That's what they called them, potholes. What do y'all call them now? That's what they used to call them back in the day, potholes in the skin. I don't know what they call them now. Am I being... in? Politically incorrect. That's what we called when we was younger. They was called potholes. But I don't see people like that no more at all. So I don't know if everybody just got money and got good dermatologists. But yeah, back in the day, all your life, you had to fight. And they could fight. So people didn't really fuck with them like that. Yeah, remember Pizza Face? They call them Pizza Face. All... I don't see that anymore. I mean, that's a blessing because who wants to have, like, you know, bad skin? Like, you know what I mean? So that's a blessing people are getting their skin fixed. What I'm saying is, like, everybody looks so grown and perfect now. There's not, there's not like a lot of, you know, differentiations. I, I guess if y'all see what I mean, like everybody didn't have like a perfect shape back in the day. Now when you go to the club, everybody for the most part looks really, really good. And then some of these clubs, they won't even let you in if you don't look a certain way. It's like everybody's following like this social media aesthetic. And it's like in the real world, when you go to Walmart, you see people who are all different types of shapes, sizes, he uh, heights, all that stuff. So I don't know. It's just weird. Somebody said filters and makeup. Maybe that's some of it too. Surgeries. Yeah, you don't see that anymore as much at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody got perfect teeth. People getting their teeth done and revamped. Like, you really, like, in this day and age, if you have a flaw and it's not fixed, it's almost like people will treat you crazy. Like, oh, my gosh, you still walking around here with a chip tooth, bitch? You know you can get that fixed? Like, you'll be clown. Like, uh-uh, you got too much money for, your, for you to be having a uh, next tooth, next mile. That's the day, that's what we're living in now. Even, like, the pale white girls. Oh, you better not be walking around here pale. Not with all these tandem booths, bitch. And yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, you bald-headed? Why ain't you got no wig? You know they sell lace fronts now. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just saying, it's just, it's very different. It's very different in this day and age. So I think it's a little bit of everything. 
that's making you know Gen Z seem and look older. But with that being said, we still got to remember that, especially the younger Gen Z, they're still young people. They're still growing. They're, you know, a lot of their brains have not developed yet. So, you know, they're still young. So we still got to give them grace, you know. But I feel bad for Jordan because, you know, Jordan was like, I don't even got no kids. Jordan, you look like a father of four. <laughs> he do. Bless his heart. And I bet you he pulls all types of millennial women. I'm just saying. A 40-year-old girlfriend somewhere. Don't play with him. Don't play with Jordan, honey. That 40-year-old is cooking him hot meals. <laughs> he eating the best food he's ever eaten. <laughs> you know, these young girls don't know how to cook, Jordan. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, Jordan fine. He legal? Shit. Jordan real cute. Hey, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan look every bit of 42. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, he gonna come back. And I bet you when he comes back with a girlfriend, she gonna be in her 40s. It's gonna be a millennial. She gonna be 35 and over. Watch. Mm-hmm. Them, uh, them late Gen Zers, they love the millennials, honey. Somebody said Michael B. Jordan. Ain't nobody talking about Michael B. Jordan, uh, Sheila. <laughs> we talking about Jordan. From TikTok, Jordan the Stallion. <laughs> no, he's cute though. He just look old as hell. He look like we both gonna be applying for Social Security soon. He cute though. All right. So now we gotta, I've been out here for two hours. Y'all are wild. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we gotta talk about this Ace Family. We gotta talk about this Ace Family bullshit. Now, Shout out to DD DVDs fans and uh, what's her name? Holly. All them fans cussed me out for three days straight, child, on my video. The video where I talked about them gaslighting the public and then having a nerd to come out like, yeah, we had a baby, bitch, we knew. Anyways, um, oh, their fans attacked me, said I was jealous, I'm broke, um, I'm a hater. Um, I'm mad I don't have as many subscribers as him. Oh, they were going in on me. I said, okay, this too shall pass. But um, anyways, so if you guys don't know, uh, Snapchat is dropping all this money. So we might have to also move to Snapchat as well. But they're paying all types of people to, you know, help revitalize Snapchat because it's falling off. And so if you guys notice a lot of these blogger YouTubers, they've all kind of picked up ship and moved to uh, Snapchat. So they're over there creating a bunch of mess and drama. The Ace family, they claim that they're going through a divorce. And a lot of people don't believe them. They feel like they're full of shit. Um, they're doing this for attention. And Austin McBroom has been out here acting like he's just so homeless and, you know, he doesn't know where he's going to get his next meal from, where he's going to stay. So he has now moved in with DVD and Holly Bailey. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this. And to me, like I said on Discord, we had a whole conversation. I'm bringing y'all to my Discord real quick. I know y'all be wanting to know. First will a Discord. There is no Discord. All right. So y'all are in my Discord. I posted this the other day. I said out everyone, I believe they are running game. Snapchat has been reaching out to a lot of influencers to come over and get a big bag. Everything she and DVD and the McBrooms are doing is very calculated. This is also the reason he accidentally leaked her ultrasound picture on Snapchat and now Austin McBroom is living with them. All of this is for clicks, views, and money, hence why all their content has conveniently moved over to Snapchat. Hollywood is dying, movies are flopping, no one is watching either one of their YouTube channels like this. And like they used to watch in the past. So now let's collaborate in the most dramatic way possible. To me, they are all one and the same. Don't let that Disney princess voice fool you. Remember, her baby dad is the one who told everybody to go call and leave horrible reviews on Yelp for that nail tech. She wasn't being racist. She was holding the Bailey sisters accountable for being late. Holly then came online to gaslight and tell everybody that it's not that serious. After her baby daddy riled up the troops. Their moves are clearly all about money and views. 
The baby now has an IG page, like I told y'all he would. Snapchat is the new hustle. So that is what I wrote. So we see here, Austin McBroom posted this on his Snapchat stories, thanking DVD and Holly. Then, hold on, let me see if I keep going. This is him coming to move in. He has his big ass trash bag, a red suitcase, DVDs pretending to be shocked as if somebody can just show up to your house in 2024 and you not know with bags and shit. Okay. And he writes, moving in. Good, bro. Yeah, man. You got my bag for me, bro? Not much of shit. Appreciate you letting me stay, bro, for real. <sighs> shit, all this damn shit. Got you a little, little gift too for looking out for me, bro. Oh shit! I got this. You got that for me. Cool. Congrats on the baby, by the way, too. Child. Oh man. And, oh yeah. Then they made they made a song too. This is him living in the RV and DGB whatever is here making a song with him. We're not gonna listen to the whole song. Tough for me. I don't understand, man. This is tough for me. I'm still healing, but uh, I want to make a song. I just don't know how to put it into words. And Dee Dee, I need your help, man. I wrote something and I need you to freestyle it for me. I miss you. Next. <laughs> I miss you. Next. Try to keep it a little quiet. And now he's pretending to cook. Top ramen. I got you. I know how that be, y'all. Got three key. I went through this whole process three times. One minute, 37 seconds later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's playing music all through this video. So, this is a news article. The Ace family and Austin McBroom moving with DDG and Holly Berry amid split. So, this is all game that they're running. Um, it's a shame. But this is where we're at in 2022. What, what year is this? Like 2020? 2024, child. This is where we're at. They're running game to be able to get a bag off of Snapchat. Um because they're definitely paying more over there, I guess, because nobody's watching the YouTube channels. Um, they said even today, Kathy McBroom came out and was like basically kind of confirming that this is fake, this is staged, because people have been attacking her, saying, well, why does why is Austin living with DDG and Haley when he should be living with you or he should be able to park his RV in the driveway? So they started attacking her, so she kind of had to come out and say, no, that's not cool. You know, he doesn't want to live there. He wants to be separate. Um, again, y'all keep trying to act like this girl is so benevolent and, you know, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. They're all in cahoots. Every last one of them, they know what they're doing. They're all chasing the bag. Her keeping that pregnancy secret was not because she wanted, you know, peace from the internet and she wanted to be pregnant in peace. No, that was just the storyline so that way people can come to their Snapchat. Because if she really wanted peace, she wouldn't be posting old pregnancy pictures. We don't care. She wouldn't be, you know, um, asking about postpartum. If you want your peace, she would just stay off of the internet and go raise and go breastfeed your child. So she's just as clout chasey as her um, baby daddy. And then let's not forget this was them today. But y'all swept down, she wants peace. I feel like they choose violence every morning. Look, he looks just like his daddy. That's all they do is troll all day. They're weird. But y'all swear up and down. They're so, you know, oh, he, he, he purposely got her pregnant and she's so innocent and he's messing up her, her reputation. They're one and the same. They're one and the same. So... Yeah, I seen that. I was like, really? <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> I said the cap on this app. Like, just always looking for attention. It's just, it's funny at this point, you know. But I just, yeah, I think she's a weirdo and he's a weirdo. You know, they're both two clowns, you know. Um, and then now with the whole 
bringing Austin McBroom into the mix. I just find that whole situation just funny. Somebody said DDD looks like Keith Lee. I don't think he looks like Keith Lee. You know who looks like Keith Lee? And I cannot get this picture out of him. Every time I see this picture, I'm like, Keith Lee? Let me see if I can find it on my Instagram page. Because Madia posted it and I legit thought it was Keith Lee. And I'm like, the hell is Keith Lee doing here? Let me see if I can. I'm going to show y'all the picture. I'm going to see if I can find the post. When you see it, you're never going to be able to look at this person the same ever again. Let me keep scrolling. Because I legit thought it was Keith Lee when I seen the post. I'm trying to find it. Hopefully it comes up. Is this the post? No, that's not it. That's Bluetooth. They said there's a warrant out for Bluetooth arrest. So they coming after his ass, child. Where's the picture? <laughs> I'm trying to find it. I don't think it was this far down. Or maybe it was. There it is. This person looks like Keith Lee. Let me show y'all this picture. Tell me he don't look like Keith Lee. Tell me he don't look like Keith Lee. T.I. Ever since I seen that picture, I cannot look at T.I. the same. He, every time I see T.I., I see Keith Lee and vice versa. Tell me he don't look like Keith Lee in that picture. That is his twin. Ever since I seen that picture, that is who Keith Lee looks like. Him and T.I. look alike. That picture be having me cracking the hell up. Every time I run across that picture, I be dying laughing. Because I'm like, because I just, I didn't even notice the other people. I looked, I said, what is Keith Lee doing with Tiny? Because I didn't even notice like King and stuff. I thought it was like, I just seen Keith Lee and Tiny. And then I realized it was T.I. I was like, what the hell? They look just alike. So now every time I see T.I., I can't even see it. Him and Keith Lee look just alike to me. So y'all, I think I got through everything. I'm going to read these last few super chats. I'm going to get up out of here. Um, thank y'all so much. This has been a wonderful stream. Let's see here. Um... Kid Bug 1983 says, I've recently celebrated one year being cancer free and I want to thank you for all the great videos because they helped me through my recovery. Oh, that is wonderful. I'm so glad that you are cancer free and thank you for letting me know that. And I'm glad my videos were able to help you as well. So thank you so much. Let's see here. Dorian Brooks in $5 says, I'm not surprised. I'm 23 and very well known that I look and dress like a father of three. Dorian, I had no idea you were 23. Wow. You always carry yourself older. That's why I be kind of shocked sometimes in the Discord because y'all are so grown to me. And I be shocked because I'm like, I wasn't doing that at y'all's age. Y'all really be booking plane tickets, hotel rooms, and be showing up to my events. And I be thinking, okay, y'all are like 30-ish. And y'all literally be like 24, 25. I'm like, do your mom know that you are here? <laughs> I remember T Sipper came one time and she was like just just turned 21. And I didn't know. Like, you know, I thought I didn't think she was 30. I mean, she looked young, but I was shocked that she was as old as you know, she was as young as she was. I'm just like, your mama let you just fly out of town to come meet a random YouTuber. She was like, Yeah, my mom's a T Sipper too. I'm like, Lord. So then I be feeling like I had to be the mom and really make sure that y'all are good. Cause y'all really be young at my events. I'm like, how did y'all get here? Like, I didn't have no money when I was y'all's age to be traveling and going to events and shit. But y'all really be pulling up. <laughs> they really be pulling up. I'm telling you, this new generation, they got money. They got access. And they're spoiled. I want to go see my favorite YouTuber. Daddy will put on the credit card and we'll fly them out. Y'all got it good. Because what no favorite YouTuber when we was younger? Be like, oh, can I go to the concert downtown? You can listen outside of the Target Center. We ain't got no Janet Jackson ticket money. <laughs> so you just stand outside of the Target Center and hope you can hear some music. But these kids now, these Gen Zers, they got it good. 
Dorian, I did not know you was 23 years old. Well, bless your heart. You old enough to be my child. I'll be cracking up. I'll be finding out some of y'all's ages because y'all really do be young out here. India sent 199. She says, it's a six foot five, 21 year old at work. I swear he was 28. <laughs> Speaking of height, let me tell y'all this. Um, I was talking to one of my friends. She was like one of my best childhood friends when I was younger. So we was catching up on Facebook. You know, we're talking about, you know, y'all's generation. You know, we got Gen Z kids, child. You know, y'all's generation, y'all is, is different. All y'all want to be entrepreneurs. A lot of y'all don't really want to work a nine to five. You know, y'all don't want to work for the man. I'm like, we didn't have that option. We just went to work. So I was asking, I said, so what is your son doing now? <laughs> she said, this nigga say, she said, I talked to my son and this nigga told me he's too tall to work. <laughs> well, I said, wait, what? He told his mom he's too tall to work. <laughs> so your chat just reminded me of this conversation. So she was like, T, I don't get it. What does he mean he's too tall to work? <laughs> I said, think about it like this, sis. You're 5'11". Like, my girl was, you know, she's tall. You know, we team tall. She's 5'11". I said, so in this world, as a tall woman, it's not like back in the day, like when she was tall. You know, people would clown you back in the day. Like, oh, you tall ass giraffe and stuff like that. But ever since America's Next Top Model, tall girls are in, right? So they don't get clowned like they used to when we were growing up. So, you know, tall girls, when they see tall girls, they automatically think model. I said, when you see a tall boy, because her son is like 6'6". Six, six, and he's like, what? How old is he? He got to be about... He's younger than mine. So he's about 21 or 22. 21, 22. He's 6'6". Six, six. So for him, when people see him, they feel like, oh, what, what NBA team you play for? Oh, you in college? You know, you a college uh, basketball player? He ain't in school. So he feels like he's too tall to work. Like, I don't got time to be working and being no waiter. Because when people see him, they automatically think like, well, why are you here? You're a waste of height. Why are you not playing basketball? Why are you not D1? So he told her flat out, he said he's not working. She needs to send him money to help him pay for his apartment and to help him pay for bills because he's too tall to work. <laughs> I said, I cannot stand Gen Z. I I said, child, we're all having issues with our Gen Z kids. He said he is too tired of work. He, he'll he get a job and will quit within a week. He said they keep coming at me, talking about I'm a waste of height. He's tired of people asking him, you know, do he play basketball? He said everybody who tall don't play basketball. I said, so what he going to do, just sit his tall ass around and what have you take care of him till he's 30? But I do, I understand this pain though as a man. Cause I remember one time I was in the hospital and this tall ass nurse came in my room. Who he was tall, cute too, tall ass white boy. Came in my room and shit, he ducking under the door. <laughs> he came in my room, I'm, I'm looking at him like. <laughs> I'm like, who are you? He was like, oh, I'm your nurse. I said, you a nurse, so you tall at you. Are you, do you play basketball? Are you just doing this to play for college? He was like, no, I'm, I'm a, I went to school to be a nurse. I said, did you play basketball in college? He was like, no, I wasn't into basketball. So I get it. You know, when it's a tall guy, we do question people differently. You know, when it's a tall girl, it's like, oh, she's a model. She's cute. But when it's a tall guy, we do feel away. You got all that damn, damn height. And you over here nursing. You got all that height. You over here waitressing. <laughs> but yeah, he told he said he's too tall to work, child. He said he's going to be an entrepreneur, maybe make TikTok videos, but he said he is too tall to work. I got, there's another Gen Z girl I know, went to school for four years, got her business degree, very smart girl, could have a decent job in corporate, said she don't want to work for the man. She, she'd rather be an entrepreneur and do, you know, do lashes and, you know, shape up people's eyebrows, just to say she has her own business. So Gen Z is built different. Y'all be grown, honey. Y'all be grown. But yeah, she said he quit his job every other week. Like, I'm too tall to work there. <laughs> I fell out. But I explained it to her. I said, let's put ourselves in his shoes. You know what I'm saying? Because that's still my baby. Even though he's 6'6", six, six, that's still my little baby. 
And I'm like, we gotta put ourselves in his shoes, sis. Like you girl, you a you a woman. So you know, for you you know, in this day and age it's cute, you a model, all that stuff. I said, but for your son, he's tall. He's 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 just tall for no reason. <laughs> he's just tall as hell, just six six. Why? Don't even know how to dribble a ball. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, y'all Gen Z kids, y'all are built different. Cause child, they will work a job and quiet quit on that ass. I said, so you mean to tell me your son be at uh, Red Lobster just quiet quitting? Just wiping non tables like I can't wait to leave next week. <laughs> well, yeah, he taught his mom. He don't, he don't, he don't, he shouldn't have to work. He's too tall to work. <laughs> so that's funny that you said that super chat because it just reminded me of that conversation with my friend. We was cracking up. I said, y'all feel bad for him, though. You know, you just 6'6 six, six at 21, and you can't dribble a ball. It's not a good look <laughs> in this day and age. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, Jeanette sent $49.99. She says, four kids and stress from child support. You are funny. Thank you. Yeah, poor Jordan. He said he can't work no regular job because he looked too damn old. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh... Hannah, Hannah sent 49 says, hey T, love your videos. I'm late Gen Z and I feel out of place at times. I don't fit the aesthetic. Currently learning what works for me. I feel you on that. You gotta definitely do what works for you. You know, you can't worry about fitting in with the trends. You gotta make yourself happy at the end of the day. So thank you for the super chat, sis. Uh, let's see here, RETD sent 49.99 says, love you T. I love the new intro. I've been watching you since. Isn't she lovely? Was your intro? Side note, Malibu Dollface had me dead from his read on the podcast. I was swerving on the highway laughing. Oh, yeah, Dollface was not playing. He came to get that off his chest, and he left no crumbs. So thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for the support, sis. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see here. D Butterfly said 999 says, hey, T, I wish the elders would understand how unbecoming immaturity looks on them. We need wise elders in reference to the food truck lady. It gets unevolved. Oh yeah, I feel you on that. I, you know, that's why I say like she, the food truck lady is je definitely uh, Gen X, okay? Um, she should have looked out for them babies. Regardless, she should have looked out for them babies and just gave them the money because she would have got her blessings either way. I think that's how she should have moved. Uh, let's see here. Blatino Boy sent 10 says DVD and Austin just took the storyline from the boondocks where Todd DeBoer, DuBois got kicked out of his home and stayed over at the Freeman house. They tried it anything for clout. That is a really good point. I didn't even think about that, that boondocks episode. That is a really good point, Blatino. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cookie sent two says Holly. Gives me the same energy as little Nas X. Mmm. I agree. Attention seeking and then playing victim. Jesse Adams says, T, just showing love. Have you watched the Wendy Williams documentary yet? Oh, that's why everybody's typing in Wendy Williams. Um, I saw the uh the trailer. Is the full documentary out? I saw the trailer. And I'm also, we need to do a um, uh, maybe we need to watch it on Rave. Do like a streaming thing. Um, I know I'm ready to see the Club Shay Shay interview with Monique. I'm definitely gonna watch that. Let's see if I can pull up the trailer because I did see that earlier today. The Wendy Williams trailer. It looks good. She over here lying though, talking about she broke. I don't feel like she's broke. I feel like she may not have access to her money. But she's saying she broke so she doesn't have to pay Kevin. So let's watch the trailer really. Ooh, that's a horrible picture. Look at this still shot. Why, why do they do her like that? With her eyes looking like that. Okay, let me <laughs> click on the video. I'm tab. six years old. Hold on, let me share this tab. All I wanted was to be famous. A lifetime two-night documentary event. Showtime. Executive produced by Wendy Williams. <laughs> Your boss is walking, everybody. Nobody can do it like Wendy. No one. People love Wendy. You are a star. She was in her living room every single day for 12 years. Yep, I guess that will do. And that's what people responded to, her authenticity. And then at the peak of her career, she was gone.
Are we ready? Yeah, I'm waiting on you. All right, and away we go. Love you, Wendy. All I know is how to be famous. I really want to be back on television. You're gonna be back on TV. That's yep. easy. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay always. Wendy, make sure you look here. One, two, three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. Oh, look Did at the baby. Did you see a neurologist to find out if I'm crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching, and she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Just keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work, but I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. Right? This is all too much. Go, drive. I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control me. I weigh 138. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. <laughs> I miss my family. I'll be here. No matter how many times somebody may fall down, you got to lift them back up. We all make choices in life. We all go through our challenges. She's still a person. How you doing? That's my sister. There have been random people around you stealing money from me, getting money, whatever the case may be. Enough. Can you tell me where your sister is? No, I don't know the exact location of where she is. I feel like the Guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life. My life. Right now, she's weak and vulnerable. And she needs to be around people who aren't going to take advantage of that. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? You know how many people love you? No, I don't. Everything is going to be good. Damn, I know. this is emotional. She even got a, hold up, was that her without a wig? I think that the. Damn, this is sad. I didn't know it was, I only saw like a, I think like a 30 second trailer. I didn't know it was this long. Is this out yet? And her son is so adorable. I'm so glad that he's, you know, speaking out and a part of this documentary. Damn, this is proof that the wrong man can like just fuck up everything you have, everything you built. Because she really loved Kevin. And like I told y'all, he was very ingrained and very instrumental, um, you know, in her brand and helping to build her up. And oh, that's sad to watch. That is really sad. Wow. Yeah, we definitely gonna watch that. When does this come out? End of February? We need to do a watch party on Rave. We haven't done a watch party in a while. Yeah, we could definitely do a watch party on Rave. Yeah, that's sad. You know, I don't care what's going on with her. At the end of the day, she is a human being. And, you know, Wendy put in work. She worked every day for like 12 years straight. Every day. You know, very rarely if ever got a break or anything. But I think she worked so much because that's all she had, really. You know, she had a, her family and stuff like that. But that was, you know, some people are so driven by work. But like her son says, she shouldn't have to work anymore. She should be able to retire and just rest in her femininity and just rest knowing that she put in work over the years. And it's sad because it seems like it's always black artists and, and a lot of black people in the industry that they put in all this work. You know, these companies, these corporations make millions and billions of dollars off of them. And then somehow they're left penniless or they don't have anything to show for it. But with her situation, I don't even think that she's really broke. I think definitely people are robbing her. But her ex-husband is trying to take money from her as well. You know, because now he's complaining and saying that he's having to, like, give back cars and move from his house with his side chick. Man, it, it's sad. It's sad. I would have never thought this would be her. Somebody says she's not even 65 and she's going through all of this. Wow. Yeah, that's sad. I wasn't expecting it to be like that. Because, you know, we've seen other, like her Lifetime documentary she did a few years ago. And that was pretty good as well, that Lifetime movie. But that was kind of like showing her start where she came from. But to see her even exposing herself like this in like a reality TV quote unquote format is very interesting because Wendy is very private. So... 
I'm definitely down to watch this. It's it's really sad. I wasn't expecting that. So, yeah, I just I just hope that everything gets better for her. Um, I know she wants to come back and spill the tea again, but I don't think she needs to. I think she needs to take care of herself. Like her eyes look really bad. Like just you can tell she's going through a lot medically, and I don't think medically, like somebody was saying, she sounds like she's losing her memory. She's forgetting stuff. I don't think she'd be able to do that vigorous schedule like she once did when she was younger. I think she really needs to rest, maybe do a podcast on her own time. You know, maybe if she still wants to talk about pop culture stuff, you know, get a podcast on Spotify, you know, do a podcast, you know, maybe twice a month. People would definitely tune in. She can get some money from it. But I don't think that she needs to be on TV Monday through Friday. I just, I just don't see that happening. That's really sad. I didn't expect to see her like that. Even like with her with, without her wig. Like I've never seen her without like her wig. Like she just looks so sick. Here, I'm going to post the picture. I've never seen her like that. That's so sad. I just hope she gets better. Who is it? Is that Black China hugging her? Child. I'm going to have to wait till the doctor. It looks like Black China, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like it's Black China hugging her. Well, y'all, I've been on here for two and a half hours. Just running my mouth on this good Friday. We had a good time. Lots of people came through. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to read these last few super chats and I'm going to get up out of here. Um, let's see here. Dorian sent $5 again. Says, I've been a, a sipper for a decade. You're why I went through becoming a welder. But yeah, no, we contribute to the household over here, tall or not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you and congratulations on getting, you know, everything done with welding. And I'm glad that I was able to encourage you to go and get your welding certifications. So that's awesome. Uh, Summer Williams sent 499 says, hey, did you see Steve Harvey's response to Cat Williams? Um, unless he sent a new response. The only one I saw was him talking on Family Feud about, you know, every new level, there's a new devil. So I haven't seen any other new response from him. Um, unless I have a link or something, I haven't seen it. Let me see if anything comes up. I'm ready to see what Monique is going to say to Shannon Sharp. That's what I'm ready for. Yeah, we're still eating off this Cat Williams, uh, controversy. So I cannot wait to see what Monique spills. Uh, let's see here. Apricot Warrior sin 499 says, hey, Auntie, can Holly redeem herself very talented i felt bad for her co-star jonah um she might be able to to her fans as somebody who's not a fan of hers i didn't grow up on Haley. i didn't grow up on the bailey sisters so i'm not a fan i have no dog in this fight so she can't convert me into a fan i just i don't like her antics especially knowing that she was pregnant and what she did to that pregnant lady was not cool um just the constant attention seeking and then the trying to play innocent, the weird Disney kid voice. I just, I don't have the energy. I don't have the energy for her. Um, but maybe her diehard fans who have been there from day one, maybe she can redeem herself with them. But I was never a fan, so there's nothing to redeem over here. Her and DVD can go on with their lives. <laughs> I just, I don't care enough. Um, but good luck to them. Let's see here. Y'all are funny. <laughs> Somebody said, nah, Holly's a mother. <laughs> Bernie Mac's daughter interviewed Monique not too long ago. I didn't watch it, though. I didn't know Bernie Mac's daughter was doing interviews. That's interesting. When is Club Shay Shay Monique? I don't know. Um, I just seen it earlier today. Um, that He had posted a picture with Monique. It might be on here. Let me see if he posted it on his um, on his wall. Oh, he also did some with Usher. Okay. Oh, he didn't post it on his YouTube wall yet, but he posted on Instagram. Either he posted or Monique. It must have been Monique. Oh, yeah, because it was like, hey, my sweet babies, Monique, being messy. Now, now Shay Shay ain't even posted this shit. Monique done ran and posted it. Look at this. I'm on his wall on YouTube. Look at this. He ain't even posted it yet. Monique done let the cat out the damn bag. He posted Usher, 21 Savage. But Monique, hey, my babies, look where I'm at. 
So the cat's out the bag. Monique posted it. But I'm watching it. I'm here for it. I want to know what Monique has to say. She's been through a lot in the industry. She's been through a lot. So I'm excited for this interview. I am. So on that note, you guys, I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm going to get ready to get up out of here. Let me see. Let me find my little outro. I forgot to do it last time. I'm still getting used to these outros. Is that it? This show has ended. I can't even find it, y'all. I don't even know if it's on here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> what I tell you about us millennials? We be stuck, honey. Oh, my gosh. It be so hard. All right, y'all. Bye. I love y'all. Talk to y'all later.